Legends, Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first arena for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. You're listening to Elmira River Sharks Hockey. Now, back to John Clement in the arena. Hello and welcome in here live into the Danbury Ice Arena. I'm John Clement bringing you all tonight's action as your Elmira River Sharks get set to square off with the Danbury Hattricks. The Sharks have dropped back-to-back -back games in the season series versus the Hattricks after managing to claw back from a 3-1 series lead to tie it up at an even keel at 3-3. Danbury got the best of Elmira 3-2 in the Sharks trip here Friday, February 23rd, and then ran the scoreboard up the next night, Saturday, February 24th, en route to a 10-4 victory over the returning Frankie McClendon. The weekend sweep gave the Tricks the 5-3 advantage in the 23-24 set with now just four games remaining, including today. The scheduling was a bit wonky in terms of the division of games as the first five matchups in history between the two all occurred in Elmira. Now six of the final seven are all occurring at the Danbury Ice Arena. Elmira saw their stranglehold on fourth place, whistled themselves down on their night off yesterday as the Rockers surrendered an early 1-0 lead to Watertown, who pulled it out 3-1. The lead is now just four points for the Sharks team who's ba dropped back-to-back -back games and four of their last six. There's no better time than now to turn things around with 10 of the final 12 games all against Empire Division foes. As for Danbury, this team certainly has found its stride over the last 10 games as they've won seven in that stretch. Five of their last seven games have all been decided by just one goal as this team looks to hit the month of April hot and find some the same magic that gave them the Commissioner's Cup hit their first one in history last spring. Now, obviously, Elmira are trying to find some magic of their own as they will look to the usual suspects to try to find ways to get things going and find ways to put themselves back in the driver's seat, something that has been very, very difficult for them here over the last little while. Unfortunately, because they have had themselves an interesting little bit as they've looked great with different players coming in. Dominic Dumas has come in. Obviously, several other players, including Trevor Newman, who has been someone to keep an eye on. Last Friday night, now, Matteo de Blasio got his first start on the River Sharks, and tonight we'll see another new former collegiate player, Tanner Coleman, make his debut. He took the rookie lap here before this one. So, again, a lot to consider as the River Sharks continue to try to put together a roster that's going to win them a place in the playoffs, and not only a place, but find themselves a path to victory in the postseason. And, of course, right now, hanging on and clinging on to that fourth-place spot they're going to have a lot of work to do as Binghamton, not an easy opponent ever, but now you have to find a way to get yourself not only into the postseason, but also over the Binghamton Black Bears. So this rest of this season has to be a tune-up. You have to treat it as such. Every one of these games needs to be treated as a playoff game, especially when you're going to see divisional foes like Danbury and Watertown for the rest of the season, as well as those same dreaded Binghamton Black Bears. Before we get to Coach's Corner, Talk about tonight's hot player to watch, brought to you by Frisbee Welding. Stephen Kling snapped out of his four-game goal drought with a goal and an assist in the 5-3 home loss versus Binghamton Friday night. After a red-hot start to his tenure in Elmire, he has come back to earth over the last couple of months. He continues to lead the team in goals with 21, assists with 31, and points with 52, and regularly finds himself involved in the big plays. Klink has the ability to tear it up on both ends of the ice and is a guy that will need a string together consistency over the last couple of weeks of the season for the Sharks, as he is tonight's Frisbee Welding. Hot player to watch. I'll send it now down to Tyler Jurich, hear what he has to say on the matter, and when we come back, it'll be time for Puck Drop. You're listening to River Sharks Hockey here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. Here's Barbecue down here in Sayre, Pennsylvania. Down here again, fortunate enough to have with us both MJ Merkel and head coach Tyler Jurich. Welcome into the show, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, John. Thanks for having us. 
We appreciate you guys coming on in. Obviously, a big weekend last weekend as you guys came away with three big points against the Binghamton Black Bears. Obviously, left a few points on the table against the Wolves, but uh, kind of sum up the weekend for us. What are you looking forward to here down the stretch run? Yeah, you're doing better Well, obviously, it's, uh, it's nice to take a couple of points from Binghamton, um, especially from Tyler. But, um, you know, they're doing well this year, and to be able to come up, come up and dominate like you did on Friday, um, I felt pretty good, so... Um, obviously, we'd like to change what we did on Saturday, um, but you know we're battling some injuries, some suspension still, stuff like that. So you know we're we're taking the positives from the weekend. We're taking the positives. Yeah. Tyler, you spoke, uh, MJ spoke about the uh, the injuries and everything going through the lineup right now. As you look at the lineup, uh, obviously a couple of changes this week to help, kind of help out defensively. What are you looking to add here? Uh, obviously, we're coming up on the trade deadline. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had the injury bug all the season, so it's nothing kind of new to us. So just add a few guys to the lineup here, a couple of the, um, it'd be nice to get another, maybe college for whatever it might be, whatever we got to do to uh, solidify our roster going to the playoffs. Um, Obviously, like MJ said, we're happy to take those three points against Bennington, but give them back against Watertown. Um, really not, not our goal, so we've got to be better with that. You know we have a tough schedule, but we have a great time to down the stretch here. Can you talk about that? Obviously, this is a big weekend again. Binghamton back in the house on Friday night, as you guys get said. Uh, down to your last few home games, obviously, first terrain has been a bit of a factor this year. Uh, what's it been like? Once again, Tyler, you played here you know, a couple years back, and then obviously with Binghamton in the past. MJ, you were here last season. Uh, what's it been like to have uh, first terrain be the impact that it has been so far this season? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, probably our best game of the season was Friday night against Binghamton. It was a packed arena, and, and the guys knew it. So, you know, kind of put two and two together there, packed arena in a game like that. Hopefully, you know, people start doing that more often. It'd be nice to support them. They work hard every day, so nice to give back to them. So, packed arena equals, you know, wins. Wink, wink. So, it was good to have it. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty simple pattern for this league. Uh, usually, there's decent support because they, uh, the teams tend to serve pretty well because they thrive off their confidence. But, um, yeah, I mean, they, they play great for the crowd, and, you know, uh, we think we can get even more people in that place, so, you know, that's what we're trying to get for, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, speaking of which, obviously, uh, speaking of how you brought it up, people packed the place, they do well, headed back to Danbury again after a couple of uh, rough games out there against the Hattricks last time you guys were there. What do you guys have to do this weekend to kind of find some more success out there in, uh, in Connecticut? Um, I mean, they obviously don't to expect. We, that game, we gave up the 10 goals. Um, we dominated the first period, and then we let up. So, you know, there's always growing pains when we don't come like this every day. At least. So that's another learning experience for them. We know we got to keep that problem and not all these things like that, especially in our home arena. So, um, we'll be more prepared. So, just to add to it, I mean, we've been preaching consistency is kind of key to, to a good team, and, you know, being able to show up night in, night out has been, you know, an ongoing issue for the team, so, you know, something we're working on, something we're getting better at, and we're going to get better at moving into playoffs. You talk about consistency, and I wanted to bring up, obviously, kind of a weird schedule this week, the Friday, off day, Saturday, and then playing on Sunday. Uh, kind of peculiar for the FPHL, not not something you've seen too much uh, during Tyler, your long career, and MJ, your career, good days back a little bit as well. Um, when you look at that and see that, especially knowing, you know, going into Sunday, obviously, you're turning the clocks forward, so it changes everything as far as preparation. Uh, it's not a 3 o'clock, really, it's a 2 o'clock. So, when you look at that, how does that kind of change the preparation? Um, yeah, you don't see the Friday, Sunday often, but I mean, you know, these are very important games, so we can lay it all out there on Friday night, and you have a full day off, and you can do it again Sunday, so it's actually kind of nice, not having back to back, so the guys actually get more energy, more prepared for that, so it'll be good. Yeah, just to add to them, I think it, it gives them a little more time to recover, I think, it, and honestly, it, uh, it benefits you just as much as it kind of hurts you, if you want to make it that way, so, I mean, I think it's not a bad thing. And of course, knowing you're going to see Danbury a lot down this stretch, uh, this is a team that's obviously you guys have been very competitive with throughout the season series so far. Uh, what do you guys have to find from the from the guys out front to kind of get the job done? Yeah, I mean, we can still we can still get the six point games every time we play a team. So we play Danbury four more times, and we're not, you know, what, 12, 14 points back. So we win those games. We put ourselves in an uh, even better position. So they're big games. They're huge goals. 
we want to find the best option to see the committee. Yeah, of course, yeah. We always want to keep uh, whoever we're playing against, uh, you know, uh, making sure yeah. that, you know, our opponents here can get to go you know, either way. It's, it's a nice thing, uh, so, you know, getting these wins in the regular season before the playoffs against realistically anybody in our division is going to keep what we have to win. And, uh, Tyler, you just talked playoff math, so I gotta ask you, how much do you guys keep an eye on the standings and the, the boards when you're uh, when you're not out there on the ice? Obviously, game time is game time, but uh, how much are you guys looking at the playoff picture and how that all shapes up right now? I mean, obviously we're all aware, but we know that when we play our game, we don't have anything to worry about. It's just a matter of doing it consistently. Yeah, that was just one of our, our primary goals for the season was to uh, kind of be a playoff on the field. And we haven't necessarily locked that in yet, but um, yeah, I just think it would, it, would, it would be playing for a first-year program to be able to kind of make a playoff for us. So. When you just talked about that, obviously, uh, you guys are in control of your own destiny. At the end of the day, uh, the points are going to work out how they work out, but you guys have the lead right now, able to really control your own destiny going into these last six weeks of the season. Um, is that kind of where you wanted to be when the season started, when you're looking at the playoff rush and the trade deadline and all of that? Yeah. Um, I'd say so. I think um, the way we've seen the direction the team has been on since the start, I think we're all very pleased with it. Um, but, you know, 13 games left and going to the playoffs, we want to get better and better. So we spend the next six weeks getting better going to the playoffs, and we're even more happy than we can be. So, yeah, it's just about getting better every day and teaching these guys how to play the right way. They're doing a good job. All right, well, I got to ask, too. I uh, saw the Dash auctions are back up for those gray jerseys, so that uh, that pretty much settles into red for the rest of the year. Those have been uh, those have been ripping and roaring. Obviously, you guys have had uh, had some a surge of confidence in the, the blood red jerseys, as I've been calling them up there on the air. Um, what is it... Uh, what is it like to kind of work your way through a season, especially with the multiple uniform? You guys have had a bunch of specialty nights over the last few months, um, getting your chance to really kind of settle in. And uh, does that do anything for you guys or for the guys on the ice? I mean, you guys both have playing experience. What is, what is the difference when you uh, walk in and see a different uniform? And what is it when you uh, walk in and see the uniform you guys are comfortable in, you've been winning in? How does that change the mentality for the players? Great question, actually. Yeah. Uh, I think the special jersey is always really cool. I think guys always like wearing something different. And our red jerseys are always jerseys are, are nice. And you kind of all did a vote on what was we wanted to roll with. And the red was the uh, the winner. So but all the special jerseys are always great, too. So it's always fun. I'm sorry. I mean, every game is kind of special. Yeah. Or, you know, one meeting is special. Yeah. 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 It's nice to go for a cause. It's nice to go for a cause. It's nice to go for a cause. So, I think it's uh, I think it's great. I think it's great for the team. The boys love it. And, uh, usually we, we have a, a bit of fun with it. Usually we'll have some props and warm up stuff like that. And, uh, Great. And yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I heard the black jerseys the other night, those were really sharp. I, yeah, I think, black yeah. Jerseys, <laughs> black jerseys, those jerseys the other night were sharp too. I think the black with our, with our logo as well. Very nice, very nice. The last question before I let you guys go and bring it on to the part where we bring on uh, one of the boys. Obviously, uh, this is a huge week. You guys have talked about it ad nauseum, but when you guys kind of look at this, and uh, we're about to jump forward in time a little bit as uh, as the night rolls over Saturday into Sunday, uh, if you guys can project out here a couple weeks down the road, where do you see this team playing? What's the uh, what's the goal of coaching staff wise? What are you looking at? Say a couple weeks, we want to be playing our best hockey. That's the that's the best I can say. We're doing that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not really a better way to put it. Uh, simple, hard hockey. Uh, we know we know how, how playoffs go in this league. It's a, it's a different way to be able to compete every night in the playoffs. We're bringing that intensity, so, I mean, being able to do that, again, that's consistent. Yeah. I'll love to hear it. All right, well, it's the coach's show, so Tyler, I'll let you introduce your... Uh... Sing, they string, featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. 
And best of all, they are performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin and potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We Make doctors. It's time to get to work. A beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner right here at Center Ice, live in Danbury, Connecticut, as these two squads get set and ready to go. The Hattricks and the River Sharks about to take the ice here for the ninth meeting of 13. These two teams have been at each other every time they've come together. Now, Elmira has to find a way to get this season series if even back up here. They will face their next three games, including tonight, are against Danbury. Here in Danbury tonight, here in Danbury on Friday, and home against the River Sharks. Danbury will make the trip to the Shark Tank. So, 
These nine points are huge as the River Sharks hope to catch the Danbury Hattricks and take third place away from them. 20 points separating them, but with four big games, it could be a huge 12 point swing, bringing them as close as eight points with some games remaining on the schedule. So we'll have to see how that all shakes out. Tonight's starting lineup for the River Sharks gonna be Sammy Bernard, 12, 13, and 0 on the season, 363 goals against a 908 save percentage. In front of him, Mark Pozar and Tanner Coleman on defense. Coleman making his lineup debut. In front of them, Blake Peavy, Marquise Grant Mentis, and Brett Parker. On the other side, Nick DiNicola, Chase Harwell, Jacob Ratcliffe out there offensively. Defensively, Dustin Henning heads out with Zach Pamelan and Connor McCollum back in between the pipes. 29 and three on the season, 322 goals against 911, save percentage and a shutout to his credit. Now the last game played in this building, it was Frankie McClendon who could not come up with a way to shut down his former team on a night where they recognized him up in the rafters and uh, gave him a, a very nice uh, welcome back. But again, the River Sharks gonna try to take care of that and uh, we're off and running as the River Sharks lose control of that one. It's dumped in and Dustin Henning gonna go back to play. Dumped in and around and I apologize for the scoreboard. We'll get that fixed here for you in the first break as Danbury throws his, that puck out. Kicked along by Coleman but couldn't control. Right back towards the Elmira zone. Picked off there by Marquise Grant Mentis and he hustles in. Grant Mentis loses that puck. Moved along quickly here by Ratcliffe and thrown towards center. Chopped down by Marquise Grant Mentis and again he will chase. Back into their own zone, 19 and a half to go here in period number one, as that puck's dumped back in by Danbury, going down to a leg, shot turned aside that time by Bernard, and again that puck moved up the far side. Chipped out and running back along, I'm just told there's some technical issues here for the Danbury hat tricks, which is explaining the rough camera cut, so as soon as that's fixed, we'll let you guys know on that as well. Puck dumped out as Abdella passes across, dumping it back in as that puck goes all the way around, so again, my apologies as they're working on getting that fixed here locally, but again, thank you to Danbury for the feed. Shot coming through, saved by Sammy Bernard as that's turned away. Pick back up as Darius Davidson trying to get it out. He flips it towards center ice, trying to poke check it along with Steven Klink. He gets it into the zone, passes off to Dominic Dumas. Dumas cutting around back behind, looking for a lane. He's still tied up with Abdella's stick, and now it'll roll back to Darius Davidson. Davidson steps around, throws it towards the front, a backhanded shot and can't get it to go. Back behind, shoved into the boards, hard was Dumas, and now back out the other way comes Danbury. The hat trick's hustling it back out and dumping that puck deep in the zone. Already 90 seconds gone without a whistle. Sammy Bernard leaving it there for Cody Rogers. Rogers looking up, trying to find a lane as Almira trying to get the offense going, something they struggled to do later in the game against Binghamton. Picked off by Johnny Ruiz. Ruiz with a shot, saved by Sammy Bernard, right back to the front, broken up, and Darius Davidson flips that one off the boards and hustles it out. Dumas. Just about out of energy as that puck comes back to Davidson and he hammers that puck in. Offsides, Almira had to touch up. McCollum leaves it back there for his defense. And now with a fresh line, Elijah Wilson trying to chase it down. It's sent ahead, McKittrick in all alone, shot goal. Danbury hits the stretch pass. And that gives the Danbury Hattricks the one nothing lead. So not at all what you were looking for if you're Elmira. McKittrick was able to tally that one, and we believe we'll get a replay on that here. So Sammy Bernard surrenders one there on the fourth shot of the game as the River Sharks will now have to come back from behind as that puck dropped. Newman gets that puck back to Kyle Powell. Powell looking ahead. Takes it himself, gains the red line, and will dump that puck all the way down. McCollum playing it back behind. Trevor Newman chasing it down, gets to the puck, throws out to the front, a shot deflected up and into the corner. Intercepted by Gaeta there, it wasn't the original target. Harwell trying to rush out, Gaeta will get there, and he dumps that puck right back in. Trevor Newman chasing after it, Pamela and back to get it. He spins and turns around. Pamela and off the boards up to Dustin Henning. Henning takes a look, feeds it ahead to Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe trying to rush it up. He dumps that puck back in all the way down. Bernard comes off his net to play, and he has it taken away by Kyle Powell. Sent up the sideboards, but picked off. Kicked aside that time, and back to the point. A shot, and goes just wide. Back to Harwell. Throws it towards the net, and again turned aside by Bernard. Another shot deflected up and into the corner as trying to chase it down. 
can't quite get there as Powell trying to battle but cannot come away with it. Back behind the net, Danbury, wraparound shot deflected and taken away. Now Elmira will hustle out the other way. Newman rushes into the zone, cuts wide, drops a pass, back for Gaeta, throws the legs, shot, can't get it to go. And Newman trying to chase it back down. Harwell's going to get to the rebound, and Danbury starts out the other way. one nothing Danbury at the moment. Is that one sent down deep? Back to get it. Elmira will try to turn it out the other way. Quick line change up front as it's sent ahead. Dumped into the zone, PV trying to chase it back down as Coleman was able to dump that puck down deep. Danbury going to be the first one to it. Zinchenko will send it back to center ice, and that'll be played back again by Coleman. Coleman tries to slap it ahead, but can't get it to anyone. It's turned right back around by the Hattricks. Into the zone, a little drop pass back as Danbury trying to set it up. It's worked along the boards, and Elmira will hustle it out. Picking it off, Cody Rogers turning, looking for help. Sends it ahead, looking for Soilus. It's tipped into the zone. Blake Peavy has it. Couldn't get around the defender. Tetro, and it's sent back out to center ice. Hustling it back in, Danbury on a quick change. Sending that puck wide, Zinchenko shunt goes wide and chasing that one down to Stavro Soilis. Flips it to center and he'll go for a line change. Didn't have the distance, Abdella quick to get back. 15.50 left to go here as the Hattricks have the 1-0 lead. Flip back ahead looking for Johnny Ruiz. The stretch pass, nothing new for the Danbury Hattricks. They love to try that play. Ruiz gets around his defender, gets that puck back to the point and Danbury keeps his own. Back to Mark Pozar now. Pozar passes off. Trying to play it ahead. It's banked off the boards up for Steven Klink, who touches it to no icing. McCollum will leave his net. Leaves it there for Pamela, and instead, he wraps around. Pamela trying to hustle it back out as that one's moved back ahead. Into the offensive zone for Danbury. The Hattrick's looking to set it up. Pass towards Ruiz. It's cut, stopped with a kick save. And again, right back to McKittrick. McKittrick back down low. Behind. Over to Ruiz. A shot. Excellent save again by Sammy Bernard. And they're going to blow this one dead. Johnny Ruiz throwing a little extra shove there at Mark Pozar. As again, we get the stoppage in play. 15.09 left to go here in the first period of play. I believe we've got the feedback on and working properly. So, again, a big thank you to the Danbury Hattricks as they are providing the camera feed tonight. Puck drop coming to the left hand side of Sammy Bernard. One back by Elmira as that's flipped back towards center ice. Drops there, Dustin Henning able to take possession, flips that puck right back in, and Bernard will go back to play. Pozar lost an edge, sends it around for Powell. Kyle Powell there. Backhands towards center ice, nobody there in a white jersey, however, as Tetro will chase it all the way back down. Tetro behind his own net, taking his time. Again, Danbury in those orange jerseys, getting left to right across your screen. Little drop pass from Harwell. Shot deflected up and over the net, but again, stays in play. Trying to chase it back down. Couldn't play that one as it's moved back behind the net. Trying to kick it along. Played back behind as Elmira trying to get things going. It's moved up to Steven Klink. He turns, banks it off the boards, but Henning able to keep the zone. Banked off a of Klink, but poke checked into the center area where Nick DiNicola has it. DiNicola back to the point and just behind him. That'll go back. Pamela and picks it up. He's harassed by Klink. Sent back ahead. Into the zone goes Ratcliffe. Down the far side. Drops a pass back. Looking for a lane. Back to Ratcliffe. Shot goes around the net as Newman will pick it up. Trevor Newman hustling it ahead. He's got Gaeta with him. Tried to throw a pass to him, but Gaeta didn't have a stick on the ice. Back out the other way. Pamela and wraps it around the boards. Takes a weird carom back to center ice where Ratcliffe picks it up. Ratcliffe will just dump that in. Sammy Bernard back to play. Danbury making a change quickly here. Puck left back. Coleman takes a long look. He's got help. Coleman fires it up the boards. Newman trying to get it out. Newman stops and turns. Fires it along again for Gaeta, who just missed that one. Back behind it goes. Abdella with it. Abdella trying to work it back along. Passed across. Trying to hustle it back. Into the zone comes Danbury. Right over the middle. Shot save. Sammy Bernard turned back around. And now Gaeta chases it down. Gaeta stood up there. That puck will be picked up and moved along by the River Sharks, however. Right through the legs of Newman. Newman puts his man into the boards, trying to get that puck out. Gaeta didn't see it as that, that puck is brought in off sides. So 13-15 to go. Shots on goal in favor of Danbury, 6-2. one nothing. as we step aside for the media timeout. We'll be right back here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. They sing, they string. Featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And 
best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. All right, with that, we are back as they get set right in front of that River Shark bench. A long look here, 13, 15 left to go. As Peavy gets set to take the draw, he'll line up against Johnny Ruiz. 13, 15 remaining period one, one nothing lead for Danbury. Puck is one back, Tetra will take possession, passing across to his defensive partner. As that one's dumped right back towards the River Shark territory. Banked back out to center ice where Grant Mentis scoops it up, sends it ahead. Back into the zone comes Peavy. Peavy with it, turns. Peavy sends it back to his defense. Shot coming through there, but it's turned aside. And back the other way comes McKittrick. Way out of his net. That one's played ahead by Sammy Bernard. Bounces off. And now Parker trying to chase it down. Icing was waved off immediately. Tetro tied up with Brett Parker. Kicks that puck back along. Moving it along is Dusick making his pro debut. McKittrick sends it deep out into center ice. Back for it, Cody Rogers. Flips that puck up and off of the metal grating. So with 12.40 left to go here in the first period, still one nothing in favor of the Danbury Hattricks. So face-off will come back into the River Shark territory as Dumas out there to take the draw. He's going to line up against Harwell, who had himself a night the last time these two teams met. Puck is down, trying to move it back along. It's picked off by the River Sharks. He's trying to slap it around the boards, but can't get solid control. Now it's bounced up to Stephen Klink. Klink looking around. Trying to hustle it back out. It's moved ahead. Powell sends it up for Clint. Clint couldn't get it cleanly. He'll chase it into the corner. Now throws it towards the front shot, and Davidson couldn't get it. McCollum, a stretch save. Excellent save by McCollum. Move back around the boards, and again, trying to move that puck along. Almira chasing as back behind. That puck moved out by Ratcliffe. Passed across, deflected up in the air. Played by Di Nicola with a high stick, and that will be brought back to center ice. 12.09 to go here in period one. Elmira trying to find their footing here. Has not been an easy task for them so far. As again, face off just in front of that Elmira penalty box area. As they get set, puck will be dropped here and Dumas ties up his man but has some trouble getting there. Picked off by Davidson and sent back to center ice but again, not able to control. Thrown right in on Sammy Bernard who holds on to it and he'll cover up. Not taking any chances there. So 11.59 to go here. As again, Elmira has to fight back. Something they've had to do all season long after an early deficit. But now, times are getting towards the end of the season. One by Danbury again, flipped over the top of the net. And now again, the River Sharks chasing. Pamela and gets it, dumps that puck down deep. Back behind the net, picked off there for Pozar. Pozar back up for Steven Klink. Klink trying to knock that puck around. It's pushed ahead and out of the zone. Darius Davidson gets the puck back. He gains the red line and dumps that puck all the way down. McCollum out to play. Hustles that puck up the sideboards. Played out towards the slot. And again, Danbury able to make a play on it. Flip back towards center ice. Kyle Powell knocks it down. Tried to throw it ahead. That'll go all the way down. McCollum out to play. McCollum leaves it there for Pamela Ann. Klink advising the pressure there for Davidson as it's moved along. And Dustin Henning hustles out. Henning harassed by Elijah Wilson. Throws that puck ahead anyway. Gets it in the offensive zone. Elmira in the middle of making changes. Back behind it goes. De Blasio trying to play it out. Trying to move it along. It's taken shot. Save Sammy Bernard. He comes up with another big save. 11.08 to go here in the first period. And the shot's on goal. 8-2 in favor of the hat tricks. Elmira's got to get some offensive zone time. So, faceoff going to come to the left-hand side of Sammy Bernard. 1-0 Danbury. That puck won back. Tetro has it. Tetro has some trouble. Dumps that puck off now. Again, back to the slot. A shot over the top of the net. Gaeta will get there and chase it down. Gaeta falls down. Gets that puck out to the blue line, but again, failing to clear. Now he gets it out. Gaeta gets free. Davide Gaeta dumping that puck in. McCollum takes possession. Trying to work it back along. It's rolled around the boards. Stopped at the blue line. Excellent work there, Almira. Throwing that puck towards the net. Knocked down by Elijah Wilson. Wilson looks, top of the circle, fires, puck bouncing around. Wilson gets it back, and it's taken through his legs now. Danbury hustles it out the other way. Flipped ahead looking for McKittrick. McKittrick couldn't control. Back to get it. 
Coleman taking in on with the free hand all over him. As again, that puck worked along. Johnny Ruiz is out there. But taken away by McKittrick. Out towards the slot, a shot turned aside. Penalty coming here as that one will be played off of Sammy Bernard. And that will be enough to get the penalty blown. So with 10.19 to go, the River Sharks will head to the penalty kill. It's going to go against Mark Pozar. And this will be, my apologies, that's against Trevor Newman. I thought that was Pozar coming out. But no, Trevor Newman will take the penalty. And again, immediately a penalty called after Danbury had their arm all the way wrapped around one of the River Sharks going back to retrieve the puck. I didn't see the signal for the call, but it is a power play for Danbury. Puck is dropped and immediately whistled dead. Going to push back the wingers. So, the River Sharks who have been able to kill some penalties as of late. That puck won back. Powell trying to chase it down. He gets to the puck and fires it ahead. Play it out. Almira will slap that one all the way down. So still a minute 50 to go of power play time. It's a Vincenzo's Pizzeria penalty kill for the River Sharks. The penalty kill for Almira, 76.2%. Danbury's power play, 17.8. Back in comes Johnny Ruiz. Dumps that puck around the boards. Chasing after it is Cunningham. He lets that one go back to the point. Back behind. Apparently the call was a slash. McKittrick comes up with the puck, looking towards the front. Broken up shot, turned aside, as that one was played into the corner now. And again, that puck goes back down low, trying to cut it off. Elmira gets tied up below the goal line. And again, Danbury able to keep possession down deep in the zone. Shot, goal. So Newman is released. The hat tricks now have a 2-0 lead as Almira chasing a 2-0 lead right now. Sammy Bernard being serenaded by the great fans here in Danbury, Connecticut. Waiting for the puck to be dropped. It's tied up and again trying to push it back through. Worked back, picked off and into the zone. Darius Davidson shot and a save on McCullum. As again, excellent work by Darius Davidson getting something going, but now it's turned back around and the River Sharks back in the zone. Turned around, Dumas sends it back to the point. Picked off there. Played ahead, the shot comes, deflected down by McCollum. Back to the point again, worked back down low, trying to play it off his clink. Throws it towards the net, bounces around the back side, and now Pamela ain't gonna chase it back down. Back towards the point again. Worked out and gotten out of the zone. As again, I apologize for the clock. We'll get that fixed for you in the next break. Trying to turn this puck ahead. Flip back up. And here comes Darius Davidson swatting it aside again. Elijah Wilson with it. Wilson across towards the middle, looking. Shot hit does not come. Right back out towards the middle. And that'll bounce back to center ice. Missed opportunity. Delayed penalty, however, as that comes up late. Played up. It's Elijah Wilson with it. Sending back towards the point. And that'll go all the way back. Back to get it goes Heggie. Curtis Heggie has possession. Looks up the ice. Six on five for the moment. Is that puck pushed back ahead? And that'll be touched by Danbury. So, 8.28 left to go here. And the River Sharks going to get a power play opportunity of their own when we come back from the media timeout. 2 nothing Danbury, a vital power play coming up for your River Sharks. Off the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hatricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fan. For more than a century, You've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile. All right, with that, we are back. 8.28 to go here in period one and a power play opportunity for the River Sharks. 
The River Sharks power play has not been something to write home about so far this season, 18.5%, and they will be going up against an 81.2% on the penalty kill, and that's the hat tricks. Very, very tough to beat. So, a big, big matchup right here as Elmira needs to come away with a point here. 2-0 Danbury at the moment. Puck pushed back, trying to play it off. It's moved along by LaBelle. Flat, pushed out flat into the zone and deking in, trying to keep possession, but it's played down and Klink will take it. Harwell was trying to get stretched past and broken away again. And you've seen it successful once already here for Danbury. Hustling back out the other way. Into the offensive zone, it's Newman. Newman turning, trying to fire it back, but it's taken off of his stick, and now Ratcliffe will hustle out. Ratcliffe and Harwell heading towards the offensive zone, and again, short-handed opportunities as that's turned aside and picked back up. Turning it around, Kyle Powell takes a long look. 7.50 to go here in the period, and again, we will fix that clock for you once we get a minute. Push back ahead into the zone. It's turned right back around, and now again, Powell has to turn and chase. Ruiz goes down. And Danbury was looking for a call, not going to get one on that. McKittrick is avoided. Right back out goes Darius Davidson, moving that puck ahead to Stephen Klink. Klink into the zone, drops a pass, poke check that one, as now it's tied up, and Danbury will come back the other way with numbers. Two on one, hustling it back in the other way. McKittrick with it, dropped for Ruiz, passed across, broken up and sent back to center ice. Now Almira with numbers. Two on one if they hurry. Davidson back in the zone, looking, has Klink, waits, pass, shot, and Klink is shoved into the net, and that will blow it dead. So, 7-11 to go in the period, as Klink was taken right into the net. Not gonna be happy about that. As again, two nothing Danbury at the moment. So the referee's having a slight discussion there, as that cannot be allowed to happen. So not surprised to see that. But again, a face-off coming here, deep in the Elmira offensive zone, 43 seconds of power play time remaining as they try to get these pegs set back up. As I said, 7-11 to go, 10-4. to four. The shot's on goal. 2-0 in favor of Danbury, who has also had some shorthanded opportunities. LaBelle up on the bench, being fairly vocal down there. As Elmira needs to find a way to get something going their way. It's been a Tough little stretch for them over the last few. They really seem to find their gears and then it's been taken away over the last four or five games. That one pushed back and back to Cody Rogers. Rogers trying to settle it down, throws it towards the net and off a leg pad into the corner it goes. Lifting a stick was Blake Peavy, sending it back towards Cody Rogers. Rogers passed across to Pozar. Back down low again, back to Pozar at the point. Pozar looking, passes off, finds his man Elijah Wilson down to Gaeta. Back to the point to Pozar. Pozar with a shot deflected off a skate and flipped back out. Pozar couldn't quite get there. Danbury going to make a change. 18 seconds to go on the power play. Pozar has to turn this up ice as quick as he can. Moved along. Trying to get it ahead. It's Elijah Wilson dumping that puck off. Dumped back ahead and picked off and dumped all the way back down by Danbury. The Hattricks have been able to stifle the power play completely. Four seconds remaining in the man advantage. And that will do it. Danbury is free from the box. Back out the other way. Davide Gaeta. Gaeta hustling in. Dumps that puck around as McCullum back to play. McCollum leaves it for his defense. LaBelle sends that up to Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe looking, deflected out off Harwell's stick. Pamelaian is there for it. Sent ahead for Harwell. Poke checked away again, as again that's worked into the corner. Fed back to Pamelaian. Back towards the point. LaBelle with a shot, deflected and up and into the netting with six minutes, four seconds left to go here in period number one. Two nothing in favor of the hat tricks at the moment. Elmira's going to have to find a way to get gritty against Danbury because this has been a little bit too easy for the hat tricks. Looking for a lane here as the River Sharks were unable to come through on the power play, which we have seen time and time again this season. It has been a struggle for Elmira to get anything going as Danbury wins the draw. Sent back towards the point. Shot save there, and it's turned aside by the River Sharks netminder, Sammy Bernard, coming up big again. Played off a skate, back out towards Stavros Soilis. Soilis has it, flips it ahead for Grant Mentis, who can't catch up to that one, rolls right in on McCullum, turned aside to Abdella. Abdella rolls that around the boards, and that'll come too easily to Ratcliffe. Harwell turns it back around, looking for Ratcliffe. Parker's stick being held onto, and he's looking for a call, not gonna get it. Back the other way it goes. Hustling back in. Puck left there for Grant Mentis. He looks up ice. Marquise Grant Mentis gets around one defender and is hustled out. 
Grant Mentis throws that puck down. They say icing, but no, it's waved off as McCollum came way out of his crease to play that one. Puck sent back around the sideboards. Big hit by Grant Mentis. Flipped off the boards and back to center. Whiffing on that one. Again, that puck's passed across by Coleman. Back to Powell, who sends that puck ahead. But again, it's chopped away. Klink had circled off. Back for Grant Mentis. Grant Mentis can't control. Trying to push it along. It's Stephen Klink. Klink into the zone. Cuts through. Has Dumas with him. Throws it towards the net. Just wide. Dumas turns back to Chase. Bounce back ahead as Woolley leaves it there. Dumped off again. Into the zone. Stochevsky throws that puck towards the net. Picked off. That'll be bounced off the boards. Again, unable to do anything with it. Woolley gets there. Sends it back down low. Danbury looking for the wraparound. Falanga with a shot. That one's turned aside. Bounced right up in the air. As now again, nobody in a white jersey there for it. Back to the point to Dustin Henning. Passed across. LaBelle shot. Deflected wide. Into the corner. Pozar trying to get there. Cannot. Danbury manages to play this puck. Stochevsky back to the point. It's LaBelle again. Across for Henning. Henning looks. Throws that puck down low. It's picked off. And now moved back ahead. Moving in is Klink. In on a breakaway. Steven Klink boot through and can't get it to go. Took a little hack there and didn't like it. Said so to the referee. Bounce back out the other way. McKittrick into the zone. Drop pass back for Stochevsky. Right back towards Bernard where it's turned aside. Powell will get there, however. Kyle Powell sends it up the sideboards. Back for it goes Abdella. Abdella flipping that puck back in. As that'll go right in on Bernard. Touched up there. Elmira turns and looks. Nobody out there at center ice. Bounces that puck to Abdella. Abdella turns it right back around. 2-0 Danbury. Breaking in the zone. Abdella shot saved by Sammy Bernard. Elijah Wilson with it. Sends it ahead. Turned around. Poke checked out to center ice where Newman comes up with it. Trevor Newman into the zone looking for help. Dumps that one deep. And now Gaeta trying to chase after it. Danbury turns it around in their own zone. Tetro has it taken away. Gaeta looking towards the front. Has it behind the net. It's Newman. Newman back to Gaeta. Gaeta drops there for Newman. Newman can't find it. Now he does. Working it out. Taken down. And now again back out the other way comes Danbury. Hustling it back ahead. It's McKittrick. Dumping that one deep. Chasing it was Bernard. He rolled it up the boards as that one played apparently off the netting. So with 3.19 to go, we will go to the final media timeout of the first period. 2 nothing hat tricks. And when we come back, the end of the first period. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and SureSmile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial glow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. All right, with that, we are back. Face off deep in the River Shark territory as Almira has to find a way to get something going. Right now, they only have four guys on the ice. No, there he is. There's a fifth one. Okay, it was hard for me to see that one as now again. Face off coming here. Puck is dropped. Trying to push it forward. Now Almira hustling out. Gaeta couldn't come up with that one, and it's kept deep for Danbury. The hat trick's looking towards the front of the net. It's knocked back down and played off the boards to no one. Right back to center ice as it's dumped back in. Bernard couldn't play, turning around to chase it. That puck in between some legs as, again, Elmira will get it back deep in their own zone. They've had trouble getting in the offensive side. 13-6, to six, the shots on goal tell the story. Right back in offside as Elijah Wilson stepped over the line of play. 2.52 to go as one more time the River Sharks have to find a way to get something going here. 2-0 lead for Danbury. As a couple early goals here. We've seen how quick a lead can turn around, but Almira's got to find their shooting button. Puck back. Danbury wins it immediately. Abdella back for it. Banks it off the boards. Able to keep it for a moment was Klink, but McKittrick picks it up and turns it around. Right back ahead. Into the zone comes Cunningham. Poke checked away from him and turned to the sideboards, but again, nobody there. McKittrick will pick up. Dumps it back for Abdella. Abdella with it. Sliding attempted save there for... Clink shot again, and another save by Sammy Bernard. He comes up with a couple of big ones there as the River Sharks trying to put everything they can in front of that puck and not let Sammy Bernard see as much rubber 
Right now, he has been hung out to dry. 15 shots for the hat tricks. We saw something similar a couple weeks ago when these two teams met. Frankie McClendon facing a lot of rubber that night. As that puck is dropped, one back, trying to play it around. It's poke checked along. Back four goes Darius Davidson, banked off the ball, off the wall, excuse me, as LaBelle dumps that right back in. Danbury was offside. Had to change uh, or get onside. My apologies. Back four goes Pozar. Pozar trying to swat at it. He's tied up with his man behind the net. Wrapped around for Steven Klink. Klink off the boards and out. Darius Davidson trying to chase it back down. Abdella going to get there. Abdella across for LaBelle. LaBelle looks up ice and flips that to center ice. Knocked off of Klink's glove and back into the defensive zone. Scooped up there by de Blasio, who passed to his defensive partner and gets it right back. De Blasio turning and looking. De Blasio sending it ahead, trying to move it up quickly. Again, was Darius Davidson some trouble as Cunningham now takes it and sends it back to his defense. Abdella with it. Sends it ahead off a clink stick, bouncing back in as de Blasio goes back to play. De Blasio back behind, wrapping that one around. Coleman, again, his first game here in Elmira. Trying to move this puck along. Coleman turns and fires it in as the offense changed up there. 90 seconds to go here in the first period. Trying to hustle it back out. Long look as that one's moved back along. Danbury will dump that puck down deep. Blake Peavy chasing. Wrapped around, all the way around as that goes back. As Dusik passes that one down low, wraps it around the boards. Back to the point to Tetro. Tetro keeps it working along the boards. All the way around again, back to Dusik. Dusik works the point back. Tetro with it, winds, sends it down low. Off of the hash marks, picked off and sent back to center ice. Tetro dumping it right back in. That one, I believe, hit the official, and that'll go back. Sammy Bernard leaves it there. Less than 54 to go in this one. Played back out, trying to move it along. It's sent wide. Back in the zone it comes. Almira into the offensive side of the ice. Throws it towards the front, and that one's turned aside. Back for it goes Blake Peavy. Dumped it off, was looking for Soilus, but it's banked towards the blue line. Cody Rogers falls down, and now a defense in a chain. Soilus on the chase. Zinchenko looking, deking, shooting, lets that one go as it's picked off by Soilus. Picked off again. Soilus knocks it back down one more time. The captain, hustling it out, gets the red line and dumps it all the way down. Chasing after it, last 20 seconds of the period as Parker couldn't play. Trying to move that puck along. Danbury still with possession, last 15 seconds of the first period. Sent back to center ice. Dumped back in. Chasing it all the way back down. Heggy gets it. Heggy moves it along for Newman. Newman turns and backhands that one ahead off of Elijah Wilson. Last four seconds of the period. Three seconds, two shot turned aside. And that will take us to the end of the first. So Almira going to have to go to the locker room and figure some things out. Two nothing deficit after one period of play. You know they're not going to be happy about that. Head coach Tyler George certainly going to have some notes as that was just not the way you wanted to start. Trying to catch a team who played last night. They should be feeling it a little bit, but not according to the way that this first period played out. McCollum had a couple of absolutely electric saves for Danbury, keeping that lead intact, but Almira, again, has to be more efficient. They have to find ways into the zone. Only nine shots on goal, giving up 19, as both McKittrick and on the other one, it was Corey Cunningham. So those goals just going to be something they're going to have to talk about and find ways to not give them up. The McKittrick goal in particular was one that you just don't want to see anybody give up. That's a tough look when you see that stretch pass up to the opposite blue line and it just goes in a little too easy over. A goaltender has been very, very hot for you. Obviously, Sammy Bernard has been stellar for the Elmira River Sharks, but... You're going to need some offensive help no matter how good your goaltender is. Zero is not going to win any game. So, got to go back out, find a way to get things done. The River Sharks trailing 2-0 right now. There's a lot of work to be done, and I'm sure Tyler Jurich has some things to say in the locker room. We will step aside when we come back. Lots more to talk about. You're listening to River Sharks Hockey here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. They sing, they string, featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net.
top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion, Danbury Hattricks, at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office, 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and SureSmile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial glow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue, and that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Callier's. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin and potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We Make doctors. It's time to get to work. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health. Counted on us to heal you, support you, encourage you, get you back on your feet. And for more than a century, Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do. Because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Looking forward while embracing our legacy. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients. Focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. At Arnett, we're nurses, doctors, and teams of other caregivers inspired by healing. We know your physical, emotional, and spiritual health are each part of the whole of you. To continue a tradition of medicine driven by compassion, teaching, and healing. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Claire, I'll let you introduce your, uh, your first guest of the evening. Maybe we'll go with uh, the guy who's sitting close, with Dominic Dumas. All right. <laughs> and Dominic, hello. Welcome on into the coaches show. Thank you for showing up. 
obviously this uh, this has been an interesting introduction for you, uh, getting your chance to start on the road and then coming into the packed house the other night at the first arena. Uh, what's the experience been like for you here getting settled in as a River Shark? Um, it's been pretty good. I think for, like, um, all the guys here are great. They uh, took me in pretty well. And then uh, obviously playing in this first arena was awesome. It was uh, that's the most packed it's been for a while, so uh, that, was, that was awesome to play in. And as you get kind of in your experience now coming on in here, and, and you've come from another organization, obviously, uh, it's an organization that's built on some success, uh, as Elmira fans are all too well aware. Um, but now that now you come here and, and bring that, what did you try to bring with you from uh, from Carolina that you brought in here? Uh, honestly, just everything that I learned from uh, all the better teams, like, uh, not the team, but the guys in Carolina, and everything that I learned from them, and uh, just everything that I learned from them, and everything that I learned from them, and everything that I learned when you come in here and obviously uh, you have a coach at this level that's, that's played at this level, found success at this level, um, how much does that kind of help as a, a player coming in to kind of settle into the environment and uh, having someone that can kind of take you through the day-to-day -day of life in this league? Um, it helps a lot. Obviously, um, obviously Carolina, I wasn't uh, as confident and uh, he went up as many points as I would like, so uh, it's been able to help me out a lot to manage you can see the uh, and of course, you've been putting up points too since you rolled in here. So, uh, what's kind of been the key to that? Is it just the quick adaptation with the lines, or what? What's it, what do you attribute to uh, to finding some early success? I mean, playing with a guy like Darius Davis and Steve Eckler, it's really good to play with and then again, as you look towards the end of the season, now obviously you're entering right in the playoff rush. Uh, how, how can you continue to contribute and put pieces together to, uh, to help the River Sharks find the playoffs? Um, I think kind of what the coach just said is uh, just kind of stick to the systems and uh, look forward to playing our best on the year. Love to hear that. And coaching staff, obviously you guys went out and picked up a piece here that uh, that likes to say yes and, and uh, kind of agreeing with you guys on every asset here. So what was uh, what was attractive to you about Dom when he came into the team? Yeah, actually, I mean, we, we actually wanted to pick him up earlier in the season. Um, good resume and we were a team for the player. And he's been off the list um, more than we expected, really. Just plays a 200 foot game plays hockey the right way. Um, we can't really estimate more than that. And he's playing on the top line with those guys, really solidifying the, the whole ice with them. And um, it's great to see him. Great kid, having fun. It's nice to see him succeed. So I just want to keep getting better and better every day with the team. Yeah, he's been fantastic for his season. I mean, he, he's coming from a team where um, I actually used to play for their like, right coach now. He's a fantastic human being, great coach. Well, before I let you get back to your food, I gotta ask the same thing I ask everybody who comes into Elmira. What's been the best part of Elmira so far outside of the arena and, uh, and what you get to do on the ice? Um, probably just getting to know the guys. Um, we got a good group of guys here, and um, yeah, just a uh, good group of friends. Uh, Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a good group of guys, and uh, I've had a lot of fun. I get to know all these guys for sure. All right, Dominic Dumas, thank you so much, and uh, good luck out here this weekend. Thank you for having me. All right, well, there you heard it from Dominic Dumas, and of course, uh, a lot to talk about here. My apologies about that, and again, a lot to chat about here in this intermission report. A look back at how it went. Uh, not the start the River Sharks wanted. They came out a quick early lead as Daniel McKittrick scored on a breakaway after a, well, a beautiful stretch pass. And, and we certainly know Danbury loves to work the stretch pass. They do it quite frequently. And uh, just 2.09 into the game, Christopher Dusick, another brand new uh, member of the Danbury Hattricks, able to send that pass ahead. And Daniel McKittrick able to tuck it home against our own Sammy Bernard. On the other side, Corey Cunningham about 10.25 into the period while Trevor Newman in for a slashing minor penalty was able to bury one from Johnny Ruiz and Chase Harwell. That gives us our current score of two to nothing. Elsewhere around the league, Whitville, the Blue Ridge Bobcats trailing the Motor City Rockers after two, four to one. The only other game going on right now, this one is a 
big hurt for uh, for the River Sharks as the Watertown Wolves have a 6-2 to two lead over the Port Huron Prowlers with 19 and a half minutes having been played in the first period. Going to need Port Huron to turn it on, get things going. We are Prowlers fans here tonight. Not in two weeks, but here tonight we are rooting for the Port Huron Prowlers. And now for the next 40 minutes of this one, the River Sharks have to find their game. It has been a tough one anytime they've come to Danbury this year. Got to find a way to deal with the play here. Got to find a way to get things going your way and find a way to put pucks behind the netminder Connor McCollum, who again has had a stellar year here, 29-3 on the season. 322 goals against, 9-11 save percentage, a shutout to his credit. He added his fifth assist of the year here tonight already as well. But now, Sammy Bernard has been a brick wall back there behind the River Sharks the past few nights, and they need to reward him here. He's faced 19 shots in the first period. Time to find the offense. Time to get things going in the opposite direction. We'll see if the River Sharks can do that. Period of the long change coming up next. River Sharks in white. We'll skate left to right across your YouTube screen. The Danbury hat tricks in those home oranges. We'll skate right to left. We'll be back after this. They sing, they string, featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first arena for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, You've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial glow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya. 
at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin and potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication, a devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We make doctors. It's time to get to work. All right, with that, we are back here live, ready for the second period of play as the River Sharks about to take to the ice. There's Sammy Bernard making his way out onto the ice surface. And again, he has been stellar as he continues to be a brick wall back behind the Elmira River Sharks. Defensive support, perhaps a little bit lacking, but the offensive support is where the River Sharks really need help. We'll see if head coach Tyler Church chooses to go a different way here with the starting lineup, but it looks as though he's going to keep it just as he started the game. I see Marquise Grant Mentis back out there. So we'll wait to see who the official starters are for period two, but you know the River Sharks need to find a way to get something going here right off the hop. And no, I'm not being metaphorical because we're playing the hat tricks, but you know, those wascally wabbits, they are certainly up to nothing right now. And you got to find a way to get them hemmed back in their own zone because it is not a easy task to find success against them. And it looks as though Connor McCollum has switched up his helmet. Interesting look down there as, all right, here we go. McCollum will take his spot down to the right-hand side. You don't often see that in the middle of a game, but we shall see how that goes for him. Interesting, interesting look. The aforementioned Sammy Bernard back down to his left-hand side. He has scratched up his crease. He is ready to go. It appears Parker back out here with Grant Mentis and Peavy. So yeah, gonna start it off the same way they started the game. And Almira obviously in need of some offensive success, something that has been lacking here for a little bit. And now we'll see if they can get things going. Powell back out here with Pozar. So that is the one change as they'll change it up defensively. Harwell will start the game. So the same starting lineup for the Danbury Hattricks as we get set to drop the puck. 19 to nine, the shot's on goal. Two nothing where it matters for the Hattricks. That face off one back for Elmira. Powell with possession, passes across. Pozar looking up ice, he finds Parker and that puck will be dumped in and out of play. So 1952, we got just eight seconds into the period <laughs> before our first face off. In the first period, we had a lot of free run time there in the first couple of minutes before Danbury was able to score. And now again, Peavy set to take the draw as they keep everybody pushed back. And there we go, puck is dropped. One back, Pozar with it. Off the boards, up to Peavy. Peavy trying to move that puck along, but it's turned right back around and Danbury will hustle in. Into the zone they come, a shot deflected off escape by Powell and turned back out the other way. Trying to hustle it ahead, but Danbury turns it right back around as working it down low is Harwell. Wrap around attempt here, looking towards the front, broken up and moved to back to the point as Henning can't keep the zone. Pushed ahead, Marquise Grammentis hustling. He has Parker with him. Grammentis looking, shooting, and it's turned back. An excellent save there by McCollum. Peavy going to come up with the puck. McC back to the point again. Trying to get this set up. A look, shot deflected and cut off again by Dustin Henning. Henning will break out the other way. Four on four back the other way as Danbury looking to make a change. That one's sent deep into the zone. Back behind Almira. Trying to hustle this puck back up. It's Peavy with it. Peavy. Passes across, finds his man, and dumps that puck out looking for Brett Parker, but Johnny Ruiz will slap that puck all the way back in and around. Cody Rogers on the chase. Can't come up with it as Cunningham does, moving it back down low. Back behind, looking for a lane. Back to the point, and it squirts out of the zone. Grant Mentis chasing as he and LaBelle, both chasing after it. Grant Mentis going to be the first one there. Shoves LaBelle off right towards the front, and nobody there for the rebound. Parker had peeled off. Back to center ice, it goes for Danbury. 18.30 left to go here in the second period of play. Back behind, trying to move that puck. Elmira can't control it, as now Dumas tries to pitchfork it out, gets it up towards the blue line, but not out. Rogers able to clear the zone as he tried to work that puck out for Davidson. It'll be picked off now for LaBelle. Trying to play it back. Danbury back to center ice. Johnny Ruiz, he takes a rough ride from Dumas. Move back ahead, off of Dumas' stick, and Abdella will take it back. Harassed by Klink, across to LaBelle. 
LaBelle looking, sent ahead. Right back to the opposite blue line. Rogers slaps it out, and Abdella will chop it down at his own blue line. Dumped right back in. Sammy Bernard there for it and covers it up. Not taking any chances again. 17.54 to go here, period two. Almira's had a couple of chances as now they're looking to get something going offensively. Danbury played a game that went to overtime last night. You have to try to take advantage of some tired legs. Especially after they're getting going here at a 3 p.m. start after the jumping ahead of an hour over the course of the evening. Picking it off, Gaeta chips that puck to center ice, but again, unable to control it once it gets to the neutral zone. Puck dumped all the way back in. Chasing after it, it's swatted at there and moved back deep. Playing it around, Coleman gets it up the sideboards. Newman pins his man there, but can't come away with the puck. He goes down to a knee, Col worked back out by Coleman, and now again, easy turnaround for Danbury. Deflected down into the Elmira defensive zone. Back to get it, a little play there by Coleman. Back out with it, Elijah Wilson. Wilson looks up ice. Sent that all the way down. They claim icing, and that will be covered. So, 17-16 to go in period two, and it's an offensive zone draw for the Danbury Hattricks. So the faceoff comes all the way back. Looks like to the left-hand side of Sammy Bernard. So faceoff coming here. As they wait for the puck drop, it's down. Danbury gets it right back to the point. Trying to work it back along, it's passed across, shot, kick save, Sammy Bernard. Worked up the sideboards. As Ratcliffe couldn't control, that's puck's flip back to center ice. Dustin Henning gonna settle it down, sends it back to his defensive partner. Pamela Ann tried to move it along. It's picked off there and Gaeta gets it back. Gaeta swats it towards a teammate but can't get it to him. Coleman kicks that puck along. Coleman passing along, trying to move it ahead. It's de Blasio dumping it off. All the way back into the zone, but can't control again as Elmira gets it back in, but Danbury turns it right back around. Hustling it in, looking for a lane. Harwell towards the middle, but nobody there. Brett Parker picks it up. Parker off the boards and back to center. LaBelle has a little trouble, but gets it up to Ratcliffe. Poke checked along and picked off by Newman. Into the zone. Newman chasing it down as he and LaBelle head into the corner. LaBelle taken off the puck, and it's now towards the middle. Grant Mentis can't settle it down, and it'll be turned out the other way by DiNicola. Moving it along to Ratcliffe, into the zone. Harwell racing towards the net as that one's tipped, and Powell comes up with it. Kyle Powell looking, firing it along. It's tipped ahead, trying to chop it down with Peavy. They say no icing. Abdella goes back to play, leaves it there for LaBelle. Fires it through the River Shark, and again, coming up with the puck. It's moved back out, two on two, back the other way. Here comes Danbury. Drop pass back towards the front, and again, taken away. As Almira, unable to control, back to LaBelle, back to Abdella. With the shot deflected, saved by Bernard. Towards the front again, and Johnny Ruiz. Buzzing around the net. Sent ahead, Grant Mentis comes up with it. Grant Mentis looking, passes off there for Blake Peavy. Peavy drops a pass for Brett Parker. Parker into the zone looking, wraps it around the boards. Nobody's on the other side. Powell took a turn. He will keep the zone, dumping it in, but took a hit from Johnny Ruiz. Back out the other way, McKittrick up to Cunningham. Cunningham into the zone, 15 and a half left to go here in the second period, looking for the wraparound attempt. Danbury trying to set it up, it's still Cunningham with the puck. Back to the point now, shot, deflected through and goes just wide. Darius Davidson will get there, he chops it and sends it out. That one's sent ahead, will it have the distance? It does and that will be icing again. So, Peavy will not be allowed to change, 15-10 remaining here in the second period. 2-0 in favor of the Danbury Hattricks as they're looking for the faceoff off to the right-hand side of Sammy Bernard. So, PV going to take the draw as we'll see if the River Sharks can get going here. A long look as PV loses that one. Back to Tetro. Big wind-up shot deflected over the top of the net. Powell is there for it, backhands that one towards Stephen Klink, it gets by him and out. Tetra will go back to play, he's harassed by Darius Davidson. Peavy makes his change, Dumas fresh on the ice now. Off the boards, back to center. Cut down there, Cody Rogers has some trouble, turns it around in his skates and comes up with the puck. Rogers flips it ahead, knocked down by Darius Davidson. Davidson has it taken off of his stick and back the other way it comes again. Zinchenko into the zone, looking back to the point. Winding, shooting, deflected, excellent work by Bernard as he will cover that one up. 14.38 to go here in the second period, and that takes us to the first media timeout of the period. Still 2-0 Danbury as Elmira trying to find their footing. They sing, they stream. 
string featuring the music of legends queen led zeppelin pink floyd van halen Jimi hendrix metallica the who and more and best of all they're performing at your very own first arena don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hatchers at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first arena for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fear. All right. Well, 14.38 to go. Two nothing in favor of the Danbury Hattricks as the River Sharks trying to find a way to get things going. Face off. Off to the left hand side of Sammy Bernard. A long look here as Dominic Dumas set to take the draw. Puck is dropped. One back for Danbury, wrapped around the boards. All the way behind, Harwell couldn't control. Cut off there and moved ahead, attempting to do it was Coleman, could not. Now it's banked off the boards and still unable to clear a delayed penalty. As we'll see, it's gonna be a hold. And nobody clear, now I guess it is gonna be Harwell. So 14-27. As the River Sharks gonna get a power play opportunity and another chance to get themselves back in this one. Have to control the play in the power play, however. That has been a struggle for the River Sharks this weekend and dating back for a little bit now. Had opportunities against Binghamton, weren't able to capitalize on the power play. The River Sharks 0 for 1 tonight on the power play. As Dumas waits for the puck drop, wins that back, gets it to the point to Powell. Powell passes across, working it along. Poke checked away from Klink, who dumps that puck down deeper. Newman there for it, gets it to Darius Davidson. Davidson turns off, he and Abdella coming together. That one's sent back below the goal line, Tetro chasing. Danbury not gonna let you get set up. Powell throws it back behind the net, rolls up to the blue line and unable to keep it was Klink. Klink will get back, sending it across to Powell. Waiting for everyone to get on side, now he dumps it in the corner, Newman chasing it down, Davidson gonna get there. Davidson with it, looking towards the net, throws it towards the net, again it bounces, another shot by Newman, he puts a couple of them on but can't get it to go. Abdella comes up with it, Klink pinches along the boards, still kept there, moved back down low by Dumas. Newman chasing it down, Newman rolls it back up the boards, it's Klink, Klink has it now. Steven Klink taking a look, takes it behind the net, looking back. Another, a minute five to go on the man advantage. Klink turning it around, dumps it off there for Dumas. Dominic Dumas with it, our first period intermission guest. Over to Newman. Newman back to the point to Clink. Clink with a shot. Save there. Saved there by Darius Davidson to keep that puck in the zone. Right back down low. Newman can't get it to go. Clink has it hop over his stick. Back behind. 45 seconds remaining. Shot off a leg pad. And Johnny Ruiz trying to break away. He does. Backhand shot. Save. Huge stop by Sammy Bernard. And Dominic Dumas back for it again. Dumas trying to settle things down. He'll give it back to Kyle Powell. 30 seconds to go on the man advantage, still two nothing as Almira looking for help. Gaeta circles back, Powell with possession. Powell breaking out, looks ahead, he finds Elijah Wilson. Wilson gets over the red line and dumps that in, onside, rolls all the way around as Peavy pinches. Peavy trying to kick it through, has that puck skitter around on him, back to the point. Cody Rogers comes up with it. Rogers looking, five seconds remaining in the man advantage, back to Cody Rogers. Rogers still waiting, passes across, trying to set it up, thrown towards the net, broken up, and that puck will be skittered away. LaBelle, a little backhander, sends it all the way ahead for Harwell. Cody Rogers is back, shot goes wide of the net. All the way back down. Trying to play it off was Henning, pushing it ahead, it's into the zone, here comes Davide Gaeta. Gaeta looking, backhand shot, and that one comes right back to him as he tries to get it back behind the net. Moved along, back up, and taken away quickly as Zinchenko gets it ahead. Gets it out to Henning. Henning takes a rough ride from Cody Rogers and he'll go off for a change. Back behind, it's Heggie. Heggie back ahead. Finds his man. 
Dumps that puck off, was looking for Peavy, but ends up on Abdella's stick. Abdella slapping that puck ahead again. Ratcliffe into the zone with DiNicola. Now Harwell joining late. Down low, looking back to Harwell. Shot deflected away, and that one's turned aside. Chasing after it. Takes it right back to Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe dumps it off for Pamelaian. Pamelaian with a shot, deflected off a couple of skates, and Pamelaian takes it right back towards the point. Pass across, shot again. Glove save, Sammy Bernard. 11.26 to go in period two. It's 2-0 Danbury. And again, the Hattricks continue to attack. The River Sharks, a couple of good opportunities on the power play, but not able to come in and cash in. Face off off to the left-hand side of the netminder, Sammy Bernard. Shots on goal, 27-16. As a long look. Puck is dropped, one back again. Trying to play it ahead. Danbury continues to work that puck around, all the way around the boards. Taken in, Stochevsky was battling, but that puck flipped back towards the neutral zone. And now Graham Mentis chasing after it. Chris Dusick back for it, but it's played by the netminder and sent back out to center ice. Played ahead, Stavros Soilis trying to bury down, but he could not. Cunningham moves it ahead to Stochevsky. Stochevsky trying to move it along. It's picked up by Pozar and right back up to Grant Mentis. Grant Mentis hustles ahead over the red line. Defender falls down, drops a pass there for Soilis. Soilis chasing it down into the offensive zone. He loses his footing. And again, Soilis trying to kick it along. It's banked back up the sideboards, and Danbury will start the breakout just as quickly. Cunningham dumps in deep. Back behind Pozar, swatting at it, but can't come up with a puck. Now it's underneath the hat tricks. As Powell goes back for it, he moves it ahead, gets it to Grant Mentis. Grant Mentis looking up, finds Clink, and it's moved in the offensive zone. Trying to get around a man. Takes it through his legs, but again, that puck sent out quickly, and back to get it will be Michael, or excuse me, Matteo de Blasio back on the ice and call. So the River Sharks will make changes as Danbury trying to make changes. <laughs> And the referee was at the River Sharks bench trying to stop them. However, I think they got, uh, <laughs> they got that figured out. 10.24 to go here in the second period. Dumas out there with Klink and Davidson again. Puck is dropped, one to the sideboards, trying to play it off. Dumas sends it back to the point. And couldn't control it. It's worked out the other way as Tanner Coleman has to turn around. Cunningham moved it ahead, picked off there. Darius Davidson back for it. Davidson. Backhands that one ahead, right towards the netminder, and McCullum will cover that one up. Another offensive zone draw for Almira. 2-0 Danbury. 10.09 to go. We're almost halfway through this one. So a huge face-off here as Almira trying to find their way back into this. Face-off off to the right-hand side of Connor McCullum. As Dumas getting set. On the back side, again, defensively pairing up is Coleman alongside Matteo de Blasio. That face off one back. Clink with a shot over the top of the net as Darius Davidson chases it down. Davidson sends it towards the front. Dumas comes up with it, sends it through the middle and couldn't find Clink. Clink gets the puck now down to Darius Davidson. Davidson with it, trying to get out from behind the net. Davidson takes it towards the slot, in his skates, poke checked away and back to center ice. Coleman turns, again his first game as a River Shark. Sends that puck all the way around the boards. Going right towards Abdella as Clink trying to get in there. Darius Davidson will. Davidson puts it through some legs and picked off there by Johnny Ruiz. Sent back out. Hustling up quickly. It's poke checked away. And now somehow McKittrick onside. And we had enough issues with that the other night. Pass across McKittrick. Shot save Sammy Bernard and he will cover up. With 9.25 to go, that'll take us to the second media timeout. Still 2-0 Danbury as the River Sharks trying to find a lane. Back into this one. Need a goal. We'll see if they can get it when we come back. 9.25 to go, two nothing hat tricks. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. 
trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. All right, with that, we are back as the River Sharks trying to find themselves a way back into this one. Trailing 2 nothing. Puck is dropped, kicked back by Danbury as Henning has it. Moves it down low. Puck rolling around. Pozar there for it and rolls it all the way. Finds Powell. Hustles that puck up quickly to Newman. Newman plays it off there for Elijah Wilson, who dumps that puck. Gaeta and Newman both chasing after it. Henning is there. Henning harassed quickly by Gaeta, but keeps possession of the puck and moves it along. Dumped right back to the neutral zone. Pozar keeping an eye on his man, Di Nicola. Di Nicola now has help, looking passed across, deflected, and that puck's still loose into Di Nicola's skates, and again, can't come up with it. Ratcliffe gets it back to Henning, deflected in the front, and that'll be picked off by Elijah Wilson. Wilson taken to the boards, and now Pozar in there digging for a two, can't come away with it. Back to the point, big shot, kick save. Another attempt shot, save again. Sammy Bernard looking huge down there in the net. Ratcliffe comes away with the puck, sends it through towards the slot, broken up, and Elmira will swat it towards the sideboards. Elijah Wilson poke checking at it, trying to get it free, doesn't have a glove on his left hand, chasing after it again. Henning dumping that puck down deep. Powell chasing after it, it's moved along the boards again. Harwell with it. Harwell tied up, trying to play it off. Ratcliffe calling for it, can't get it back as Pamela Ann does come up with it. Pamela Ann walking, shooting, save Sammy Bernard. And we are at 8.10 to go here. So the River Sharks bend, but do not break on that offensive exchange. Elijah Wilson gonna get his glove back. And the faceoff will stay deep in their defensive zone. Have to find a way to get things going here. Shots on goal, 30 to 19 in favor of Danbury. As Peavy chatting with his line. What they wanna do here, Stochevsky. Lines that one up, puck is loose still, winds up on Woolley's stick now for Danbury, throw towards the net and that'll be covered up. As again, Sammy Bernard comes up big. 8.03 remaining here in period number two. Again, the River Sharks being outshot. Now you have to find ways to get offense going. Had a couple power play opportunities, both went for naught. Stochevsky wins that one back. Tetra with it, throws it towards the net and Bernard comes up with a save. Back behind, Coleman moves that puck around. De Blasio trying to get it through the referee and does. Parker gets it out towards center ice. Still some trouble controlling as that puck bounces back in the D Danbury end. Tetro back to play. Tetro banks it off the backboards. Again, the hat tricks trying to move it up quickly. They get it to the neutral zone, but it's sent right back in. Elmira tags up on side and now turns around to chase again. Back out of the zone, hustling. It's Tusik dumping that puck in. He has an assist here on his first game as a professional. Back down low for Stochevsky. Stochevsky back to the middle, trying to play this one off. It's Zinchenko with it now. Zinchenko back along the sideboards towards the front shot and a save. Huge stop again by Sammy Bernard. 7.22 left to go in the period. So a face off again, deep in the defensive zone. Pozar, Clink, back out here with Dumas and Davidson. This is a line that can be impactful out of nowhere and they really could use something to go their way here. Dumas wins that puck back. It's Pozar looking. He's taken down. River Sharks want to call. Not going to get one there. Pozar still tied up. Dumas trying to get around as McKittrick trying to sell a high stick. Back behind. It's Clink. Clink hustles out past Johnny Ruiz. Clink ahead. He takes a hit up high. Right back towards the front. Dumas couldn't get control. Now turn shot and save there. Another attempt here for Dumas, sends it off, looking for Kyle Powell. Powell gets it back, throws it towards the net, deflection into the corner, as that's picked off. Elmira has it, flipped back ahead, but Johnny Ruiz comes away with it. Back the other way, it's Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe into the zone, harassed by Pozar. Ratcliffe and Pozar battling, dumped off. Back down low again, Danbury has that one picked off, and now two on one, Davidson and Clink. Davidson hustling ahead, Henning racing for it. Davidson shot just wide, rolls up the sideboards. Danbury gets it ahead. Dumped down deep as Ruiz looking towards the middle. Right in, shot, Di Nicola stopped. Huge save, Sammy Bernard. 6.25 to go. 
Cody Rogers not taking kindly to the after effect. And now again, not sure what they're asking for. They're pointing at a board down here on the Danbury bench. So, very confused as to what that's all about. But 6.25 to go here in the period as Elmira has the defensive zone draw again. Elijah Wilson tied up. Danbury wins the draw yet again. Dumped back off. Thrown towards the net. Sammy Bernard turns it away. Gaeta will get there. Davide Gaeta hustling it ahead over the red line. Dumping that one off for Newman. Newman back through to Gaeta. Gaeta backhander. Can't get it to go. Back along the boards. Di Nicola can't control. Back to the point. And Elmira with a shot deflected. Goes just wide. Chasing in. Gaeta can't get the shot off. And again, move back ahead by the hat tricks. Di Nicola sends it ahead. Turn back to center ice. And Ratcliffe will have to turn it around. Plays it back defensively. Abdella passes across. Harwell moves it ahead to Ratcliffe. Into the zone. Ratcliffe trying to play it off. Looking for help. Sends it back to the point to Abdella. Abdella circling. Down low to Ratcliffe. Off a leg again. Ratcliffe still with possession. Sends it back to the point again. Abdella looking. It's deflected into the corner. Harwell is there. His stick is lifted. Tied up along the sideboards as de Blasio got held up there. Ratcliffe comes away with the puck. Looking. Turn. Shoot. Save by Sammy Bernard. As again, puck moved along by Di Nicola. Back down low. Puck is loose. Chasing after it. Coleman can't come up with it. Now, coming up with it is Newman. Trevor Newman looks. Gaeta was racing towards the offensive zone, but no help there as there's three orange jerseys back. 5-10 left to go here in the period. Right off the bench goes PB. Plays that one. Move back ahead. Now Grant Mentis hustles in the offensive zone. Grant Mentis avoids the stick check, and that puck will be deflected out of play by the netminder. So with 4.59 to go, we will take the final media timeout and come back with the rest of the second period. Almira looking for an answer here. Down to nothing. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment. All right. We are back. Face off in the offensive zone. Clink, Dumas, Davidson back over the boards. Powell and Pozar on the backside. Almira desperate to find something before the end of this second period. Clink set to take the draw. Long look. Clink ties up his man, wins that back. Powell able to keep the zone, but banks that puck off a Danbury hat trick defender and back out the other way. Falango with it. Falango looking, looking for the pass and an excellent save by Sammy Bernard. 4.50 left to go here in the period. As again, Almira still trailing 2 nothing. Needs to find something offensive here as Almira will quickly change their offensive group. PV, Parker, and Grant Mentis back out here. So a long look as PV set to take the draw. Lines up, puck is down, one back by Elmira that time towards Sammy Bernard and it's kicked away. Powell trying to hustle it ahead. Powell and Grant Mentis breaking through the neutral zone, thrown towards the net and that'll be covered up and stopped by the Danbury netminder. So face off, back in the offensive zone and quickly change up the offense. <laughs> Dumas, Clink, and Davidson right back out there. Harwell, Ratcliffe, Di Nicola over the boards for Danbury. As I said, Danbury trailing as they have, not trailing, my apologies. Danbury struggling a little bit here as the game gets later on. They played till overtime with Binghamton last night, a big, hard hitting game. And that should be the advantage of Elmira, but they have to take advantage and find ways to get things going. 
as Almira should have the extra shot of energy with the day off yesterday. Puck moved back, sent along the sideboards. LaBelle sends it up to the neutral zone. Back to get it goes Pozar. Pozar banks it back to center ice where it's picked off there by Dumas. Dumas into the offensive zone, gets around LaBelle. Dumas still chasing that puck, gets it down into the corner. Dumas is tied up. Klink trying to move it and does. Klink trying to get it through, backhander shot, and stopped by McCollum. As Klink was trying to find it, 419 left to go here in the second period. Love to see that type of effort out of Steven Klink. Quick change here again from head coach Tyler Jurich. It's going to be Newman, Wilson, and Gaeta. As they'll change up defensively, putting Henning and Pamela Ann out there for Danbury. 4.19 remaining here in period two. Shots on goal 40 to 26 at the moment. As that puck is dropped, Danbury wins it right back, trying to hustle it around. Send up the sideboards. Dean Nicola will get it. Sending it back defensively. Henning gets it deep into the zone. Turning it back around. De Blasio there for it. De Blasio has possession. Offsides were the hat trick, so time for Almira. De Blasio starts out. Sends ahead for Wilson. Tips it ahead to Newman. Newman into the zone. He avoids the check of Pamela Ann and runs him into the boards instead. Puck kicked back along, and now Elijah Wilson tried to chase it down. He and Dustin Henning coming together. Puck unable to be kept as Dina Cola hustles it out the other way. De Blasio keeping an eye. Dina Nicola throws it back towards the slot, but it's wrapped around the boards instead. All the way back towards the point, Ratcliffe has it. Gaeta on him. Deflected in front where it's picked off. And now Coleman looks up ice. Coleman over the blue line, over the red line, and dumping that puck ahead. He'll go off for a change. Dustin Henning turning to chase. Wraps that puck around the boards, right back to Ratcliffe. Picked off there by Elijah Wilson. Shot by Gaeta, and it's glove save. As Gaeta right in the slot. Had that puck come into him. Wound up and took a slapper. But McCollum up to the challenge there. 2-0 Danbury, 3.20 to go here in period number two. So the faceoff coming to the right-hand side of the netminder. Shots on goal, 40-27 to in favor of the hat tricks. Klink gets set for the draw. Matches up with Johnny Ruiz. Puck is down. Ruiz wins the draw back cleanly. Flipped up the boards and back to the neutral zone. Played ahead up to Kyle Powell. Powell fires it along and right off the netminder, wraps around the boards. Darius Davidson couldn't get control of it. A weird carom off the boards. And again, that puck kept in the zone for a moment. Dumas turns. LaBelle right on him. Dumas dumps that puck down in and now Clink on the chase. Abdella back for it. Rolls it up the sideboards to Johnny Ruiz. Gets that puck out. Trying to move it along. Cunningham got it up and into the zone. McKittrick turns around. He has that puck taken away from him. Bounce back to the blue line. Abdella able to keep it. Flips it down in the opposite corner. Chasing it. LaBelle gets there, Powell swatting at it, can't come up with it, as now that's sent back down deeper. Danbury comes away with the puck, flip back out, and now Klink on the chase. Klink racing towards it, he only has himself, Abdella chasing after it too, taken down, and that's going to be a penalty, and Klink is doubled over. Klink not going to be happy about that one, everybody being kept aside. Referee has his line up, or his arm up immediately. Klink slow to his feet, and he will head right for the bench. Soilis going over to chat with the official. I don't think there's much doubt about that one. Clink grabbing his arm. Abdella going to the box. Soilis over there to have the chat with the official. And we'll see how long this one is. 2.29 left to go in the period. As Soilis chatting with the official here. So it will be a power play opportunity, but we'll get the replay. No, I thought we were getting a replay. It's just two minutes up on the board. And again, Clink, as it's going to be a timeout for the River Sharks. So we'll step aside for 30 seconds. And when we come back, power play opportunity again for Elmira. We'll see how it rolls out. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. All right, with that, we are back. 2.29 to go here, period number two. An important two-minute power play. Johnny Ruiz now over there chatting with the officials, but they showed the replay in-house here, and there's a good look again as 
Ruiz even pointing up to it. I don't know what the argument would be because Abdella literally wraps an arm around him and throws him into the boards. So a clear penalty. Referee's got that one right for sure. Shots on goal, 40 to 27. Elijah Wilson out here to start the power play. Clink is out there, but you wonder how he's feeling. He was grabbing his arm as he came off the ice. Wilson tied up and loses that draw. Tetro rolls it around. Back behind. Flip back to center ice where it's chopped down. Almeyer trying to come up with it. Clink does. Clink has it. Sends that to Newman. Newman dumps that puck down in the corner. Now Clink will chase after it. A little hesitant to go into that corner. LaBelle was there. Flip back ahead, and now McKittrick hustling out. McKittrick in all alone, looking, digging shots, stopped. Huge stop, Sammy Bernard. As that's turned back ahead, and my apologies on the clock again, we'll get that fixed for you. Two minutes to go here in the second period. Gaeta passes over to Powell. Powell, a little backhander, moving that puck down. Newman back behind the net for it. Sends it out right towards the front, but nobody there. Johnny Ruiz with a drop pass, and that puck will be dumped all the way down. Minute 45 to go in the period. Minute 15 to go in the power play. And again, we'll get that clock fixed for you as soon as we can. As now, Powell looks up ice, tries to throw it through. Deflection there. Zinchenko hustles in shot, save Sammy Bernard. As Zinchenko hustled off, Almira trying to battle for that puck. It's kept down deep in their defensive zone. Just a minute to go in the power play. And now Elijah Wilson comes up with it. Wilson looks up ice, finds a man, bounces that one off a of clink skate and dumps back off the linesman. Picked off and banked back ahead again. Pushed ahead by Elijah Wilson. Wilson into the zone. He will work it down. Sent towards the net. Deflected and goes just wide. Up to Stephen Klink at the point. Passed across. Trying to work it around. It's Coleman. Coleman back down though. Looking back towards the point. It's Darius Davidson. Throws it towards the net. Deflected. Back to Klink. Shot. And goal! Stephen Klink buries it. And that makes it 2-1 Danbury. Excellent work by Stephen Klink on the power play. As he manages to put one home. And now it's a one goal game here late in the second period. 58 seconds remaining as Klink continues to be the hot man. Harwell not happy. He is slamming the door, screaming at the officials. So 58 seconds to go. Stephen Klink able to close the gap. Peavy tied up. He goes down. Puck is loose and back. Danbury's defense playing it up. LaBelle dumping that puck along. Chopped down there by McKittrick. Poke checked away, and now that'll be taken away, and Peavy will hustle out the other way. Sends up for, towards Graham Mentis. Into the zone it goes. Avoids LaBelle, but LaBelle gets the puck back. Back down low, chasing after it. Elmira trying to get there. Graham Mentis will. Graham Mentis looking back towards Coleman. Spins off, throws it towards the net, deflected, and that puck was loose for a second. <laughs> Jumping on top of it was McCullum. 32.1 seconds remaining. And a 2-1 hockey game as Elmira has shrunk the deficit to just one. Shots on goal in favor of Danbury, still 43 to 30. But Elmira staying with it. Clink set to take the draw. A big draw here. Puck is down. Clink gets tied up on the draw. Back to get it. Kayeta to the point. Coleman with it. Throws it towards the net. Goes just wide. Darius Davidson there for it now. Davidson. Loses possession, dumps that one along the wall. Still being pinned to the wall was Darius Davidson trying to cut this puck off. It's kept in the zone, sent down low. De Blasio couldn't get it clean as that puck's off the boards and back to center ice. Hustled out is Harwell. 10 seconds remaining in the period. Harwell cutting towards the front, broken up, and that'll be taken away. Excellent work by Almira, who looks content to run out this period. Towards the front of the net, deflected, and a huge save again by Sammy Bernard as that'll expire the period. Only one goal in that period, and it came off the stick of Steven Klink. A rebound goal. Huge effort for Almira, as now just another excellent period from Sammy Bernard. He has been stellar back between the pipes, but Almira has to find a way to get another goal. They, right now, trail 2-1. to one. And again, a couple of power play opportunities as they show you the replay right here. Almira, the only one able to find the scoreboard there in the second period as the River Sharks still with work to do. Johnny Ruiz having a conversation with the official and Kyle Powell wasn't going to let that go unnoticed. He headed over there as well and he is talking with the official at the same time. Almira's had the edge in the power play opportunities, but again, 
I don't know, the missed calls are just as rough as the ones that get made. Steven Klink took a rough ride into the boards. Glad to see he's okay, was well enough to put a puck behind the netminder. And after two periods of play, the Elmira River Sharks gonna be very happy that Steven Klink has come up with a big goal. And now they just trail by one. So we'll have to see if they can get it back to even to start the third period. And of course, aside from getting it back to even, find a lead. It's not been an easy task for them. As now, again, Stephen Klink adds the goal. McKittrick and Cunningham right now have the two for Danbury. River Shark still with a lot of work to do. We'll be back after this here on the second period intermission report. They sing, they string, featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hatchers at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial glow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin and potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. 
we make doctors. It's time to get to work. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health. Counted on us to heal you, support you, encourage you, get you back on your feet. And for more than a century, Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do. Because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Looking forward while embracing our legacy. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients. Focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. At Arnett, we're nurses, doctors, and teams of other caregivers inspired by healing. We know your physical, emotional, and spiritual health are each part of the whole of you. To continue a tradition of medicine driven by compassion, teaching, and healing. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Obviously, as Coach just said, welcome to the Coach's Show. First question that everybody's uh, dying to know, how are you? Uh, obviously, you went off in the first period, so. <laughs> uh, I'm all right. I'm uh, doing good. Obviously, I skipped the last of uh, Saturday's game, but I am uh, getting back there as soon as possible. Love to hear that, and I'm sure the fans are very excited to, uh, to hear that as well. Uh, Rasmus, you've been wearing that A since the beginning of the season. What have you seen as far as you know this team coming along and developing and, and pushing towards the playoff spot right now? I see a lot of, lot of guys go out, a lot of guys come in and just play hockey, but I think this team makes it a very good place to be, a good place to come in. Already, if we treat each other that way, uh, we win together, we lose together, we do everything together. Like we got the majority of the team right here just. 20 minutes away, just like Coach show, like we are. We're a tight group, and I bet all you guys feel the same way. So, taking care of each other is one of the things I feel that is a very good part of this team. When being part of that leadership group, how do you uh, kind of facilitate that, getting the guys going and, and getting them, you know, obviously coming in to be part of that family group that you just mentioned? Yeah, make sure everyone is included. Uh, the rookies, they can uh, come in. Uh, I try to lead by example and try to teach them as much as I got taught before. And the vets come in, obviously, have a presence as, as vets. They, they know the way around it. So we all help out together. The way the team is run is different, and we are doing our way. So just introducing you guys to that, the way we do new things is what's important. And speaking of the team being run differently, what, what ways would you say that it was it was run differently as your coaching staff sits two feet from you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to the details, and teams where it's been very much more chaos. Uh, and you got people not listening, and you got you got and you try to next in, in the team, you got uh, stuff being run the weird ways, and that the staff and the are not yeah. listening to the players. Yeah, yeah, I, don't feel that, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like that's the issue here. And we're all this together. And we're all. Coach, yeah. yeah. how does that feel to hear that that's the kind of uh, vibe you're getting from the leadership group here? <laughs> he's, he's not one of them, so it's alright. No, it's, uh, it's a tight knit group. I mean, it's the only way, the only way you can be successful. I think, it's, I think it's pretty clear the way they've been playing since we went to Cornwall in January. We have the right core guys here. Speaking of that, Rasmus, obviously the playoffs are on the horizon now, six weeks away from the postseason. Uh, what's kind of the message? I mean, obviously the coaches already told us, you know, they're looking for consistency. They're looking for, you know, a group of guys that's ready to compete. Uh, what's the message from you as part of the leadership group when you're talking to these guys, especially when you're getting guys still coming in and, and having their first game here in a River Shark uniform? Basically, I know everyone in this team knows we can play with every team in this league. Uh, it's just the fact that 
Sometimes we get back to that and sometimes we get back to that. We get to battle with that game and actually play the way we're the, the supposed to be. And we all will have a good chance against any team in this game. Awesome. All right, well, last question before I let you go here back to your food. Obviously, we'll, uh, we'll keep it short for you, but um, again, you've gotten the chance to experience this from day one. Uh, what would you say if you were telling somebody about coming to Elmira? What's the biggest draw here and what's uh, what makes it special? It's a lot of things. Uh, the arena is great. Uh, we've got great fans. Uh, we have a case that got the with the junior teams around. Uh, the booths are amazing, obviously, the coaching staff. And, and Whatever you from that, and just facility, fans, uh, and as of right now, good viewers. All right, love to hear it. Thank you so much for asking for that. We appreciate you. All right, coaching staff, we'll take in just a couple more questions, and we'll let you guys get some, some food of your own and obviously uh, kick off your night. As uh, we look forward here, obviously we've kind of talked about what's coming up on the weekend, but uh, and I asked about the scoreboard watching and the points watching. Uh, with Watertown in the rearview mirror, how important are those games? How important are you watching those games as they roll out? And obviously uh, that's a team you're still going to see three more times this season. At the end of the day, we just have to take care of business. We're not chasing anybody, so... Um, you know, they can do their school and watch it. I'm sure they will. Um, they played the game of their life the other night. So it is what it is. We just got to take care of our own business. We're not worried about one of them. Yeah, just, uh, just come out and play hard. Playing <clears throat> play smart and play our game. We, we know we're, we're the more talented team. So uh, we're not really concerned with with more talent. And again, you guys uh, talked about the, the place being packed the other night. A game on Friday against Binghamton again. You know Binghamton fans travel very, very well. How important is it for these Elmira fans to show up and, and show their support? Yeah, it's usually a luxury atmosphere. You know, we get to each other. So obviously we anticipate they're going to come out. Um, this was Ben Hinch from last week. Which, I mean, that, makes, that makes it fun for our guys. They know that, so it'll be even more amped up. So yeah, it's turned into a nice little uh, IF6 rivalry. Uh, you know, each team shows up with a little more emotion every time we play each other. So um, I think it's great. Uh, next year will be fantastic. I think it's great. MJ's got to sign next year, so we'll ask the question. When you guys are going out this uh, this summer, we'll look a little bit farther ahead in the timeline here. Uh, how do you find the right guys to put a team together? You guys have done such a good job this year. You got your guys in a playoff spot. Obviously, the trade deadline coming up. What do you look for when you're looking for an Elmira River Shark? It'll be nice going to the next season having uh, a core group that we don't have to we need to get rid of. Um, we basically didn't have a team to start with, so... Uh, bringing these guys in has been um, just a trip, really, at this point of the season to have this group. So um, it'll make our lives a lot easier. And, you know, it's, it's really about building a culture. So we're going to have a team here long term. Um, you want to have the right guys. It's not always about the best, most talented guys. Yes, they have skill and talent, but they have to be uh, um, kind of, you know, a blue guy, a culture, whatever it might be. You know, you can't be selfish and do your own thing. It just doesn't work that way. It never will. Those type of guys are nice. And just that, like I said, just to have a few of these these guys back, not starting from scratch. Uh, like you said, the, the blue guys, the Darius Davidson, Steve Clay. It's a breath of fresh air to not know that we have to start back at some point. That's, that's for sure. Um, uh, we knew that there was a lot, there was a lot of challenges we were going to face this year as far as building the culture that we wanted and having things kind of operate the way we wanted to. But these guys kind of have a very good grasp of what we have in the country here. And you know, they're, they're doing their best to try to you know, kind of have make these new guys. So I think it'll be great. Well, last two plugs before I let you guys get back to it. Dash jersey auctions are back up. Those beautiful gray jerseys that you guys wore for three quarters of the season are up and on the auction. Uh, MJ, yours is very worn. Tyler, I believe yours was worn one time? One time. You had a specialty jersey the other night. Is that right? Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so big jerseys there for both of the coaching staff as well. Make sure you get in, get your bids in on that. And as the coaches have said all 
series long, all year long. Get out to the first arena. Come out on Friday night. Support them against the Binghamton Black Bears. Get your tickets on Ticketmaster, the Ticketmaster app, or by calling the box office, 607-734-PUCK. Next week, we'll be back at Mooney's, back up at the Arnett Mall. Looking forward to that. Thank you again to Callier's Barbecue for hosting us here. It's been the Coach's Show. I'm John Clement. Good night, Elmira. All right, well, again, come out and join us at Mooney's this week as the Elmira River Sharks coaching shows are wrapping up. It is uh, not too far away as we are coming to the end of the season, folks, so make sure you join us for some of these. Get your chance to hang out with the guys and eat some really great food. There's not a place we've gone that I haven't been appreciative of the meal, that's for sure. Uh, now, again, third period about to come up. Period of the long change is over, so... Again, in those visiting whites, Elmira will skate right to left across your YouTube screen, and the Danbury Hattricks in those home oranges will skate left to right. Shots on goal, 43 to 30 in favor of the Hattricks. Score that matters, two to one in favor of the Hattricks. And now, Elmira has to find a way to get themselves going because in a look around the out-of-town scoreboard, ladies and gentlemen, it is not pretty. Eight to four after well, almost two full periods as the Prowlers trail Watertown. Across the way, Motor City is winners over the Blue Ridge Bobcats 4-1, to one, and Carolina taking on the Baton Rouge Zydeco have the 2-0 lead after one. So, the River Sharks and the Hattricks. 2-1 game. About to kick off the final period right now as these two squads emblazoned in a battle. Elmira needs to get this game tied up. The next goal will tie up the game for Elmira if they're able to get it. That will be a big step. If they can come out and attack, that'll be even bigger. Elmira needs to find a way to keep going. Help support Sammy Bernard. The big man takes to the crease. And again, everybody getting the, uh, the stretch coming out here. Sammy goes back to scratching up his sur ice surface. And now the Danbury Hattricks will be coming down the tunnel to get things started up here. And again, Elmira desperately going to need a win with Watertown a four-goal lead as they head into the final day of the weekend. And, of course, both squads in desperate need of playoff positioning here. Almira trying to find their way into the playoffs in their inaugural season. And don't forget, a couple of years ago when Almira got into the playoffs in their inaugural season, wearing some uh, neon green uniforms, they were able to go all the way to the finals, losing a heartbreaker to the Carolina Thunderbirds. But you never know what can happen. The playoffs reset everything. So have to get the points here tonight. It is huge as Elmira has a four point lead and would like to keep it and with the Watertown Wolves leading in their game in order to keep that four point lead, Elmira needs a victory. So, a look here at what head coach Tyler Jurich is thinking. Pozar, Powell, Grant Mentis, Parker, and Peavy right back out there. He's gonna start it off the same way he started off the rest of the game. So I guess that shouldn't be too surprising. As we get going here, Hattrick's got two goals back in the first period. Almira has the only goal in the second. It was Steven Klink on the power play. Each side has a power play marker. Almira in desperation mode now, knows they need a goal to tie this one up. They win the faceoff. Pozar has possession over the red line and dumps that one right down towards the net. McCullum able to turn that one away quickly. Pamela and sends it around the boards where it's cut off by Grant Mentis. Passed across to no one, unfortunately, back to get it. Mark Pozar. Pozar turns and looks, deflected off a stick. Peavy looked, but Grant Mentis will pick it up. Marquise Grant Mentis sends it back to Pozar and back again. Powell fires it ahead into the zone onside, right towards the netminder, and he will cover up. Not taking any chances with Brett Parker right near the net. Parker, a little wry smile as they'll make a change, and Davidson, Dumas, and Klink back out here. Face off off to the left-hand side of the netminder as Dumas set to take the draw. Davidson and Klink flank him on either side. Stoichevsky 
Rounding to take the face off. Puck is dropped. One back cleanly by Elmira. Powell able to keep the zone. Sending it towards the net. Kick saved by McCullum. Back to get it goes Dumas. Dumas pushed into the boards by Stoichevsky. Trying to move that puck along. It's worked up the sideboards. Powell going to pinch. Throws it towards the net. Deflected and goes just wide. As that'll work up the sideboards to Woolley. Woolley has some trouble with it. Back. Stephen Klink with possession. Throws it towards the net over the top of the glove. That'll bounce back around. And hustling that puck out is Danbury. Woolley gets it on the near side boards. Woolley has a poke checked off of his stick and gets it right back, dumping it around the boards. Darius Davidson trying to chase it down. He's harassed by Stoichevsky, put into the boards hard. Back behind to Kyle Powell, works it around to Pozar. Pozar looks up ice, trying to find a lane. Pozar will flip it ahead, deep in the zone, right towards the netminder, and he will cover up. Again, not taking any chances. With 18.48 left to go here in the period. Almira trying to get themselves back into this one, trailing by a goal as Tetro having a chat with his captain, Johnny Ruiz. Elijah Wilson set to take the draw. Wilson tied up as that one's won back and worked around, Tetro with it. Firing it up the boards quickly, trying to get this puck all the way down. They ice that down. McKittrick will win the race to it. Picked off and sent to the sideboards. Elijah Wilson chasing after it. He shoved off and that puck worked back towards the point. Tetro with it. Passes along. It's McKittrick dumping it down below the goal line for Johnny Ruiz. Ruiz couldn't control, moves it along now. Davide Gaeta trying to hustle it along. Gaeta worked to the sideboards where it's played out. Defensively getting it up towards Elijah Wilson, but it's taken away again quickly by McKittrick. McKittrick moves that puck along. Trying to play it off is Cunningham. Into the zone, dumps that puck off. Danbury was in the midst of making changes. They'll dump that puck back in and finish that change. Back behind their own net, Almira slowing things down. Looking up ice. All the way ahead, Gaeta touches, so no icing. Back behind it goes, Dusik. Dusik rolls that puck up the sideboards, and again, Danbury trying to set it up. Pass back through, picked off by Brett Parker. Parker towards the net, off of a leg and into the glove of the netminder. 17.46 to go here in period three. Still two to one in favor of the hat tricks. And I apologize, we had some scoreboard issues there, but it's 2-1 Danbury. 17.46 remaining. Face off off to the right-hand side of McCollum. Peavy set to take the draw. Back out there with Parker and Grant Mentis. Puck is dropped, one back to the point. Trying to set it up. Cody Rogers passes it across to Parker. Parker looking back, throws it towards the net, deflected, trying to settle it down with Peavy. Back to the point shot over the top of the net. Parker with an excellent effort there. And again, that puck skitters its way out of the zone. Danbury circling back around, it's Di Nicola. Di Nicola is back, Dustin Henning. Firing it ahead, stretch pass works out again. Harwell into the front shot, save, and a huge stop by Sammy Bernard. As Rogers gets it ahead to Graham Mentis. Graham Mentis off the boards, Harwell gets it right back. He's harassed, pinned to the boards. Graham Mentis throws it ahead but can't control as now it'll roll back to the defense. Flip back ahead, trying to hit that stretch pass again. Ratcliffe poke checked at it and Harwell couldn't get it. Now he does back below the goal line. Cody Rogers is there, sends it around but right onto a Danbury stick. Hattricks again, buzzing around. Back out to center ice where Pamela and dumps it right back in. Hattricks were offsides, get back onside and we'll make changes. Passed across as Elmira looks up the ice. Firing it ahead, it's Brett Parker. Parker into the offensive zone. Looking for help, doesn't have it. Abdella and Parker go back behind the net. Moves it along the sideboards all the way up to the point. Powell shoots it towards the net, right back towards the front. Davidson with a shot and it's turned aside. Back behind Parker. Back down low for Dumas. Dumas back behind the net. Looking for the wraparound, couldn't get it. Back to the point to Pozar. Pozar looks, fires it through, deflected off of the goaltender, and that puck will be moved along. Woolley hustling out, three on two. Almira looking for a change as Kling trying to get on the ice. It's deflected around and goes back behind, trying to play it off. A little bit of physicality down low. Works its way up to Darius Davidson, passed across, and right back there for Abdella, circling around is Powell. Powell fires it through the neutral zone, tipped aside, and now Darius Davidson chasing it. LaBelle is there. LaBelle takes it into his own... Zone and back behind his own net. Four minutes already gone here in the third. 2-1 Danbury as the bell drops. A little bit of help there, right back to LaBelle. Only one man deep, it's Elijah Wilson. Looking around. The blender is on as Klink and Gaeta out there in the neutral zone. Elijah Wilson tried to pressure, but again, right back out, Dusik. Throws it through the neutral zone, chopped down. Johnny Ruiz with it, winds, fire save by Sammy Bernard. Trying to chop at that one. Bounces back towards McKittrick. Come up with it and back out the other way. Elijah Wilson into the offensive zone. Passes ahead. Clink gets there, fires it towards the net, and again it's turned around. 
McKittrick banks it off the wall, trying to get it to Ruiz. Ruiz is back into the zone. Coleman harassing him, drops for McKittrick and takes it away. Coleman trying to get there, but McKittrick still working it with his foot. Back behind. De Blasio moves it across, hustling it back ahead. Now Gaeta gets it up into the offensive zone. It's Klink. Klink towards the front, trying to knock it down. Gaeta played it with his hand. That's going to be no goal. Gaeta chopped it out of midair, but it's immediately whistled down. So, not going to get anywhere with that, but he tried to knock it out of midair and just couldn't do it. So that'll be no goal. It does end up behind the netminder, but immediately waved off. So 15 minutes to go. We'll see if we get the media timeout or if we'll go right back to action. They opened the penalty box door. I'm not sure why. So the call on the ice was no goal as it obviously was knocked down by Gaeta, but he couldn't get his stick on it. So 15 minutes to go in period three, still two to one. Puck is dropped, one back. Powell tries to pass it across. Pozar couldn't get there. Lift the stick of Harwell and move back ahead. Into the zone goes Newman. Newman passed across towards the front. Back hit your goal! Elijah Wilson backhander buries it. 2-2. Two -two. A beauty of a play after the Davide, Davide Gaeta hand goal was not allowed. Newman, second man through the tunnel, and again, excellent work just 10 seconds later. You love to see that effort from the River Sharks, and now it's a 2-2 game. So, Elmira right back to work. 46-37, the shot's on goal. A tie game, 2-2. Huge effort there as now. Right back to work. Face off one back by Danbury as Pamela and goes back to get it. Pamela and back behind his own crease, trying to turn it around. Moving this puck ahead. Danbury rushing back to the offensive zone, dumped wide. Sammy Bernard able to get it and cover it up. That'll take us to the media timeout. 14.36 to go. We'll be back after this break. River Sharks tie it up 2-2 two two here at the Danbury Ice Arena. They sing, they string. Featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. All right, well, <laughs> again, an odd little way to start the third period, but the River Sharks get the tying goal they needed. Now they've got to push the pace of play. Just 5.30 or 5.23 into the third period of play. Elijah Wilson from Trevor Newman tied this game up. And now, 14.36 to go. Tie game doesn't help you. You need a win. Looking at the out-of-town scoreboard, Third period about to get underway. Watertown still up by four. So, huge moment here as the River Sharks need to keep pushing the pace of play. As again, 14.36 remaining. They wait, puck is dropped, one to the sideboards. Danbury in there, battling. Both sides now, two men aside, trying to play it ahead. Gramet is circling, taken down, but Danbury comes out of the scrum with it. Back behind the goal line. Trying to work it to the front. It's picked off by Graham Mentis and Almira hustles out with it. Graham Mentis working it ahead. Into the offensive zone. Avoids the check and now he takes one as that puck is pushed back along. Back to get it. Pamela and gets it out to center ice. Dumped off of the linesman. Picked up by Peavy and sent along. De Blasio sending that puck ahead. Trying to chop it. It was Parker couldn't. Back behind into Powell. Six minutes gone here in the third period. A tie game 2-2. Two to two. Grant Mentis comes up with it into the zone. Grant Mentis shoots it, deflected into the corner again. McCollum right back out towards the front, picked off, worked into the front, a shot deflected up and over the top, but LaBelle able to turn it aside. Unable to keep the zone was de Blasio. Passing across. Coleman dumping that in. 
Coleman lets that one ride the boards. Chasing back after it was Dumas, couldn't come up with it. McKittrick up and quickly out of the zone, turning it around again is Almira. Almira, a little bit of jump in their step now. Pushed along, Zinchenko comes up with it and sends it back defensively for LaBelle. Luckily no one had jumped on. Ruiz chasing it forward, Coleman after him, chops it into the corner, Ruiz's stick comes out of his hand. And now again, Coleman back behind. De Blasio sending it ahead. Knocked out there by Klink and he'll flip that towards center ice. And LaBelle dumping that back off. Klink is there for it, chops it back ahead into the zone and Almira comes in cleanly. Will drop for Davidson, shot just wide. And again, Dumas right there, couldn't nail it. As back out the other way it comes, Harwell has possession. Harwell trying to cut through three defenders. Shoots that one off a pad, sends it back to LaBelle. Winds, fires, kick save, Sammy Bernard. And now Powell's there for it. Flip towards center ice. Poke checked along again and again failing to clear. Shot wide, deflected, again chopping it down as again continuing to push. Falanga battling, pushes that puck along. Harwell with it now. Harwell towards the front, save Sammy Bernard. Again, avoiding the check. Falanga taken to the boards and again that puck back behind the net. Therefore, it is Pozar flipping it towards the boards, but again, it's worked deeper. Danbury able to keep this zone for a moment here. Hustling that out, gets it to center, and again, can't control. It's in Di Nicola skates, and again, throws that puck wide. In, onside, Ratcliffe with it, looking, shooting, and turned aside again. Back behind. Pozar flips it. Chopped down with a hand. That's got to be a hand pass as Di Nicola tried to deke it around. And with 12.03 to go, the River Sharks have been hemmed in their own zone for quite a while now. So they came out with a little bit of jump after the goal, but now that faceoff comes back to center ice, see if they can get things going their way again. Peavy out here to take the draw. He lines up with Harwell, 12.03 to go. Puck is dropped, pushed back through, Ratcliffe moves it along, Tetro passes along to his defensive partner, wrapping all the way around. Back to get it goes Pozar. Pozar there for a poke checking at it, trying to get it back through Newman. Back to Tetro at the point. Dump down lower, Pozar picks it off. Pozar looks up ice, trying to find an open man. Now he fires it through, kicked ahead by Newman, passed off for Davide Gaeta. Gaeta back through for Newman and can't control. Tetro chops it away and breaks out. Right ahead, Harwell with it, dumping that puck all the way around. Ratcliffe chasing it down as he will get there, but it's taken away. Newman comes away with it. Newman fires it ahead and Gaeta trying to get free, but can't. Two defenders kept him from doing that. Onside as Dusik has it. Tosses it across. Woolley there for it. Woolley turns it back around, sends it back to Dusik. Dusik looking up ice, banks it off the boards. Chopped down there by Elijah Wilson and kept in the zone all the way down low. Chasing after it was Newman, but Woolley's going to get there first. Woolley turns, sends it off a body, flipped up in the air, coming away with it. Newman is tied up. Puck pushed back. Elijah Wilson fires, and it's a glove save as McCollum comes up big. 11 one to go here in the third period as the River Sharks gonna make a change here offensively. Grant Mentis, Parker, and Peavy back out here. Elmira needs something to cross the goal line here. Peavy chatting up his teammates. A huge game, 11.01 to go. As Peavy gets set, Blake Peavy Loses that one back cleanly. Pamelayan has possession, harassed by Graham Mentis. Puck is kept for a moment, but Johnny Ruiz hustles it out the other way. Johnny Ruiz still battling his way through. Poke checked away from him as Graham Mentis deflects it back towards the point. Henning able to keep it. Now it's turned away again by Graham Mentis and back to center ice. Henning will turn it around. Henning back behind. Flipping that puck deep in the zone. An offsides call is made. And with 10.39 to go, bring the faceoff back to center ice. So, face off, back out here at center. 2-2 game as the River Sharks coming up with a third period goal that they needed. Still have half a period here. Both sides looking for a winner as that puck worked back along. LaBelle has it. Unpressured, he dumps that puck in easily. Sammy Bernard puts it back behind for Pozar. Pozar backhands it, back towards LaBelle who uses a big frame to keep that puck in the zone. Back down, Powell wraps it around the boards and now Darius Davidson back for it. Davidson fires it through some legs and now Steven Klink gets it in the offensive zone. He's tied up by Abdella and again taken away. Back down low, Dumas is there for it. He's tied up. Dumas tries to move it along. A shot by Klink and right off the netminder. Klink trying to get his stick back, flipped ahead and now a lifted stick by Dumas. Turned around and Dumas takes a rough ride 
As that puck sent back, Abdella trying to move it along. LaBelle fires it ahead, picked off there by Powell. Powell dumps it right back in and wide. Into the corner. Steven Klink was trying to get it, could not. Harwell moves it ahead and dumps that puck down deep. A little bit of contact there, but back behind it goes. Chasing after it is de Blasio. Matteo de Blasio looking up ice. Quick changes here for Almira. De Blasio comes out. Gaeta fresh off the bench, but de Blasio will circle back. Dumps it off again. Coleman. Coleman off the boards. Tip there as now Klink tries to chase after it. Tetro has it. Tetro works it up the sideboards. Finds Johnny Ruiz. Ruiz all the way across as Cunningham couldn't play. Back in the zone. Shot towards the net. Covered up once again by Sammy Bernard. And that'll take us to the second media timeout. 9.17 to go. Shots on goal 50 to 38. We'll be back after this. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fan. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. All right, with that, we are back. 2-2 hockey game. 88 shots here this afternoon. 9.17 to go here in the third period as Elmira trying to find a goal. Puck is dropped, one back. Played behind, de Blasio has it. Fires it up the boards, looking to get it to Newman. Newman was there, they say no icing. As Tetro goes back to play, rolls it up the sideboards on the far side, back to the center ice area. Coleman flips it ahead to Wilson. Wilson dumps it right back in. And now again, McCollum some trouble holding on to that one. A lifted stick. Puck goes back towards the neutral zone. McKittrick sends it ahead. And now two, three on one. Ruiz into the zone. Pass across. Looking. Shot. Goes just wide. Right back towards the front of shot. And that one, they want to say that's a good goal. The referee has not made a signal yet. A player is down. And they need somebody out there immediately. Is Coleman or is it Bernard? Hustling over there to get the defensive player. It is Coleman. As now again, 8.48 left to go. No signal by the official, so I'm assuming this is no goal. As Coleman still doubled over. Tanner Coleman still doubled over there. We'll see the replay here. As you see everybody celebrating. Referee does not make any signal for goal, so right now the replay tells us that we will keep going. Coleman goes right back to the bench. So, 2-2 two two hockey game, 8.48 to go, face off to the left-hand side of Sammy Bernard. Important face off here. Looking for a face off win. Elijah Wilson gets tied up, one right back. As again, Danbury takes possession. Swatted aside, Ratcliffe gets it down deeper. Shot towards the net, Sammy Bernard turns it aside. And again, that puck worked out. Hustled out by Newman, but again, it's turned right back around. Danbury trying to get free of the zone, and now they will. Stepping around, Cody Rogers hustling up offensively. The defenseman carrying it in the offensive, or excuse me, I apologize, that was Elijah Wilson. Wilson with a shot, deflected off a shoulder. That one went off Gaeta's mask as well. As Pozar turns it around, back ahead. As that one's touched off sides, Wilson thought he was back at center ice, but the official says no. So that'll bring the faceoff back to literally center ice. Okay, so intentional offsides, apparently the call. 8-17 remaining here in the third period. 53-44 to 44 the shots on goal. We are three shots away from 100 shots in this game. Faceoff coming here. As the puck is dropped, one to the sideboards, back to get it. Powell moves it ahead, Graham Entis off a defender but can't get it deep in the zone. Powell steps up and takes that puck away. Flips it ahead, Graham Entis chasing it as that puck does get into the zone. 
Pamela and trying to move that puck, but he loses possession. Now he swipes it. Grant Mentis, not happy about that, kicked along. As again, trying to work this puck back out, it's Dustin Henning off the boards, back to center ice. Knocked down by Kyle Powell. Powell has it, fires it along towards the Danbury bench. Chopping at it was Brett Parker, couldn't control. Back in the other way, it's Peavy. Back, Grant Mentis, shot, save, shot again, and it's still loose in front, and Parker can't get free. Sent back to the point and out. Shoved back in by Elmira, but gets the puck back at center ice. Turned back around, a little backhander, but Henning couldn't control. Quick change now for the River Sharks. Henning with it. Fires it along the boards. Chopped ahead and Powell knocks it back down. Powell passes across. It's Pozar. Pozar ahead for Parker. Brett Parker into the zone. He's harassed by Johnny Ruiz. Back to Grant Mentis at the point. And again, back to center ice. Turning it around. Sent ahead. Into the zone comes Danbury again. Shot. Deflected in the corner. Chasing it down and wrapped around by Coleman. Back out towards the point. Taking it away. Coleman wraps it around. Glad to see he's okay. Back behind. Parker gets his stick back. Moved ahead, Grant Mentis didn't even move to get that puck as LaBelle sending it ahead, it's picked off. Dominic Dumas trying to flip it ahead, he gets it into the offensive zone but can't control, Abdella has it. Abdella across to LaBelle. LaBelle looking ahead, passes it northbound and again right across. Harwell shot, kick, save, turned around as that's flipped ahead, LaBelle keeps the zone. Klink did not like it, back behind. Coleman chasing after it. Sent wide again, Falanga dumping that puck down low for Harwell. Move back along, LaBelle at the point. Fires it through, saves Sammy Bernard, and that'll be covered up. As a few extra to hacks, jacks, and wah, and crabs. As again, the Elmira River Sharks tied two to two right now. We have officially eclipsed the 100 shot mark. 6.30 left to go. As again, face off to the right hand side of Sammy Bernard. Waiting for the puck drop. It is down, one back by Danbury again. Big windup from LaBelle, but no shot. Back to LaBelle, a shot deflected, covered up by Sammy Bernard and Pozar. Again, trying to keep this man from the side of the crease. That's Ratcliffe right buzzing around there. 6.24 to go. Again, Sammy Bernard, if he is not first star of this game, if the River Sharks take the win, it is a crime. So, face-off coming here to the right-hand side of Bernard. Puck dropped there, trying to push it ahead, but again, one back. LaBelle keeps the zone, dumps it down low. Pozar chasing after it again. Dumped off, Elmira moves that puck ahead and flipped ahead quickly, it's Steven Klink. Klink, who got the scoring started for the River Sharks. Avoids a check, loses his balance. Dumas gets it back. Dumas towards the front, but nobody there to help. LaBelle looks up ice. As Di Nicola racing for the offensive zone but can't control, they'll dump off and Pozar will go back to play. Mark Pozar looks up ice. Under six minutes to go here in the third period. Fired ahead, up for Steven Klink. Klink is in, tries to drag it through some legs and can't. Tetro able to put the stop on that one. Back behind for Dominic Dumas. Dumas, back to the point. Finds his man, passed across. Kyle Powell into the zone, throws it towards the net and that one is loose in the it went in, it's in the back of the net. A huge goal, Dominic Dumas. Dumas buries it and the River Sharks are up three to two. Excellent work there for the River Sharks as they make it three to two. 5.35 remaining and Dominic Dumas, who has made an impact since getting here, scores his fourth goal of the season. Kyle Powell's gonna get his 300th assist as a member of the FPHL. Congratulations, Kyle Powell. Face off one back. So congratulations, Kyle Powell, as that one's moved back behind. Trying to pick that puck off, it's wrapped around. And again, banked off the boards and out. Hustling back, the River Sharks cannot sit back, they have to continue to attack. Henning back for it, wraps it around the boards. Trying to get it up quickly, McKittrick will dump. This one should be, will be, and is an icing call. So, the River Sharks have the lead. Kyle Powell's 300th FPHL assist. And we'll get that up uh, hopefully on social media here in just a second. So, huge goal there for the River Sharks. As now again, face off coming here. as the puck ready to be dropped. 
They jumped that one there for a second. As now we get set again, about to kick out one of the hat tricks from the face-off circle. It's Johnny Ruiz. As that one's dropped and we are back to action, banked off the boards. That's gonna go all the way down. Pozar is gonna go touch up for the icing call. As that one is touched up. So that'll come all the way back down. As again, as face off off to the left hand side of the netminder. As the puck coming down dropped here. They wait, they're gonna kick out Tambury again. Puck is dropped and Henning gets it back to the point. Kept there by Powell again. Puck is knocked back down, but Henning able to work that puck physically back to the neutral zone. Picked off by Kyle Powell, and a bunch of action going on there. Dumped off, bounced back into the zone. Elijah Wilson lets it go. Pozar gets back to play. 4.45 left to go in the third period as the River Sharks have the lead. That should be too many men on the ice, but they're not going to get the call there. Wrap back around. Cunningham with it. Cunningham sends that puck ahead. Picked off there as Almira trying to play it off, but Johnny Ruiz getting physical. Dumps that puck back off. Abdella with it. Dumps that puck deep. Bernard catches. He will let it go for Pozar. Four minutes, 23 seconds to go. A 3-2 River Shark lead as that puck moved back along. Kyle Powell with it. Powell fires it ahead. Gaeta touches, so no icing. LaBelle gets the puck right back, however. Passing across for Abdella. Quick changes here for the River Sharks. Have to keep attacking. Ratcliffe throws it ahead. Broken up at center ice. Ratcliffe right back in. Dumps the puck off. Danbury. With a zone, shoots, save, turned around, stopped again. Huge play by Sammy Bernard. LaBelle with it, fires it towards the net. As a penalty upcoming, and that will be a stoppage of play with 3.54 to go. I think Elmira is going to take a penalty here. We'll wait to see. It will be a cross check against Elmira. Pozar is the one going to the box. We'll step aside for the media timeout. 3.54 to go, and the River Sharks. We we'll have a huge kill in front of them. Danbury very accurate on the power play. We'll be back. Three to two, Elmira, after this. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-7. 3-3-6-8-2-5 today. Ready for a financial glow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding, LLC. All right, with that, we are back. 3.54 to go. As face off here. Another Vincenzo's Pizzeria penalty kill. Vincenzo's Pizzeria, great pizza, just steps from the first arena. Push back along, McKittrick keeps that puck moving. Take it away, LaBelle able to knock it down and keep the zone. Passed across, McKittrick again. Pass across, shot, save, huge stop. Worked back to the point, LaBelle able to keep it again. LaBelle with it, looking for a lane. He winds, fires, deflected through, and just skitters across the goal mouth. Trying to push it down, Coleman is tied up. Looking back to the point, LaBelle with it again. Dumps it down low. McKittrick has it now. McKittrick looking from the circle back to LaBelle. LaBelle all the way across. Sent down low again towards the front end. Harwell couldn't get it in. McKittrick with it. Back to the point to LaBelle. LaBelle waits. Was looking to fire. Couldn't shot. Goes over the top of the net. Rides the rails all the way to the blue line and able to keep it again. Right towards the slot. Chopped away. Ruiz is down. And again trying to poke check that one out of the zone. Cannot. Back behind. Excellent poke check there by the netminder. Back towards Johnny Ruiz. Ruiz still with it. Back down low. Harwell trying to wrap around there. Under three minutes to go. A minute already gone on the PK. Back behind McKittrick to LaBelle. LaBelle winds, fires, goes just wide. Back for it. Coleman wraps it around the boards. All the way to the blue line and can't clear again. 
right back through in the slot. Down into the corner, Powell pinned in there. And that one escapes the zone. The bell could not keep his own pass as that'll give Elmira a chance to make a change. Couple of players come over the boards. Parker chasing after. Dumped off in the slot shot, save! Huge stop by Bernard. 30 seconds to go in the kill. Back to the point. Woolley, back again. Ratcliffe, back to Woolley. Off a stick, and again, Danbury keeping the zone the whole time. Dumped back off. Woolley, back off to Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe attacked there, but Woolley gets it right back and across. Looking, shot, save! Huge stop, Sammy Bernard! 2.04 to go here in period three. 10 seconds remaining on the kill. As the River Sharks trying to get this one to expire. Mark Pozar has been pinned in there. Are we gonna get a timeout here for Danbury? No, they're gonna pull the netminder. So, empty cage all the way down at the other end. Now we get a timeout for Danbury. We will step aside for 30 seconds. When we come back, River Sharks, hat tricks, the final 204. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings, and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607 733 6825 today ready for a financial all right face off comes all the way deep in the zone 204 to go in the period 10 seconds to go on the man advantage six on four as Ratcliffe late to get on the ice as now again Elmira needs a face off win here 10 seconds to go on the kill puck is down one back, Danbury with it. McKittrick harassed immediately, sent wide. Johnny Ruiz has it, he's pinned to the boards. Sent back down low in the slot shot, save, huge stop. Rides the rails, hustle, no they say it touched the netting. Davidson was gonna get an easy empty net opportunity. The hat tricks catch a break as Darius Davidson is robbed of an easy empty net goal. So three to two continues, power play officially over. 111 shots so far on the night. Still a minute 52 to go. Six on five now, as Elmira needs to win a draw. Puck is dropped, tied up, taken away. Excellent work by Elmira, sent ahead. Steven Klink racing after it. He's gonna get there. Bears off the ice and call, but can't get possession to take the shot. Work through the legs. Davidson turns, fires towards the net, turned away. Excellent work by Danbury's defensive unit. Chopped back down by Darius Davidson. And again, he chases. LaBelle has it. Being held up is Davidson. And back out the other way, Johnny Ruiz. Moves it over to LaBelle. Passed across for Ruiz. Into the zone, Johnny Ruiz. Off of Kyle Powell. Turned back behind. All the way around. Darius Davidson turns and fires. That one's going to go all the way down. And this will be a chance as Dumas gets there. Has possession. Dumps it back off. Clink shot. Goal! A minute nine left to go, and Steven Klink makes it a 4-2 game. So the fans will start to head for the exits. A minute nine remaining, and Elmira gonna take a 4-2 lead. As the River Sharks trying to protect their four point lead for the final playoff spot. Puck is dropped, Danbury wins it back. Pamelayan there for it. Gaeta chasing him, moved over to Abdella. Abdella up to Woolley. Woolley, still a minute to go here in the third period. Moved along, it's chopped ahead and hustling back out. Stoichevsky has it. Stoichevsky looking, passing across, dumped into the corner now. Trying to get there, a big hit, and now Gaeta hustling out. Gets it up there, moved along by Elijah Wilson, sent back past him to Powell and back behind to Pozar. Pozar up the boards, chipped there by Wilson, no icing, as that'll go all the way down. McCollum out to play. Tries to send it along, it's left back behind Abdella with it now. Abdella hustling out, he was harassed by Gaeta, but gets it out cleanly now. Dumps that off, back behind. Pozar is there, 
Pozar spins, sends it back behind. Last 20 seconds of the period. And that one's thrown towards the net, deflected. And with 15 seconds to go, Pozar is going to take another penalty. 12.9 seconds remaining. And Mark Pozar is going back to the sin bin. So uh, this one's going to finish off in an odd fashion, but holding is the call on Pozar. But Almira should get the victory here simply for the last 12.9. Not going to pull the netminder on this one, I don't believe, with 12 seconds remaining. If Elmira can win the draw and dump this puck all the way down, that's going to do it. And you love to see the effort. As now again, 12.9 seconds remaining. Puck is dropped. Trying to kick it along. It's one back by Elmira. Turned, fired off the boards, and right to Tetro. Tetro passes it along. Back through the middle. It's kept in the zone. Four seconds to go. Off a skate. Towards the middle. Blocked down, and Sammy Bernard comes up huge again. So Almira is going to take a victory, a huge victory, as the two-goal first period doesn't come back to bite them. It's a 4-2 to two victory as Klink has two goals here tonight. Huge goals for the Almira River Sharks. Young man, he has been impressive. And I'll tell you what, tonight he continued to be impressive. You love to see that. Again, Stephen Klink buries two tonight, including the empty netter. Elijah Wilson and Dominic Dumas, the other two goal scorers, as the River Sharks claim victory here tonight. And again, you love to see that type of effort. It's been something that's been hard to come up with as the River Sharks really have tried and tried and tried, but just have not been able to find the way to get past the hat tricks. Tonight, they have cut the deficit in the season series to one, as now again, just excellent, excellent work. They came out and never gave up, as Wilson has a goal as well. So you're about to see that final score up on the middle of your screen. And again, I appreciate everybody tuning in here. We're going to have a quick look around the out-of-town scoreboard before we head out, but congratulations again, Kyle Powell, his 300th career assist and you just love to see that that's a huge huge achievement for Kyle Powell as there it is Clint Dumas and Wilson had all the goals Kyle Powell a huge assist his 300th of his career and the Elmira River Sharks going to get a final score four to two over the Danbury Hattricks keeping well extending the lead right now to seven points on the Watertown Wolves we'll take a quick look at the out of town scoreboard before we're out of here Motor City comes away with a victory over Blue Ridge, 4-1. The Watertown Wolves almost halfway through the third period, 9-5 in favor of Watertown. And the final game of the night, 5-0 Carolina, 16-06 through the second period. Clink gets the third star of the game. We'll wait to see if Sammy Bernard gets this due. Certainly should. So they give it to Dominic Dumas for the second star. First star is, is going to be Sammy Bernard. So congratulations, Sammy Bernard. You certainly earned that one. An excellent effort. And again, Elmira comes away with the victory. Congratulations, Kyle Powell. Congratulations to the River Sharks. 4-2 to win. We'll be back on Friday right here from the Danbury Ice Arena. See if the River Sharks can keep things going and get a little bit of a roll moving on. I'm John Clement. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night, Elmira. River Sharks win 4-2.